Hello, magandang hapan po sa ating lahat. Once again, try to check if our audio is doing good. Hopefully clear naman po. Loud and clear, sir. All right, thank you. Thank you for the response. Mic test one, mic test one. Magandang hapon po. Good afternoon, everyone. And just trying to check my audio if it's really doing well. <laughs> so I hope clear naman po tayo, no? I hope you guys can hear me loud and clear. Okay, so I got a response from... Chester Nugget. Loud and clear, sir. Ayan, very good. Thank you. All right, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat and welcome to our webinar on ICT Proficiency Exam. Ayan, so uh, there are a lot of you guys who are asking questions. What, what's in it for us? Or anong meron sa webinar na to? So there are a lot of probably uh, questions that pop up to your mind, no? So there you go. Malalaman po natin yan later on yung mga questions niyo. But anyways... Before anything else, ladies and gentlemen, ayan, sa mga joiners po natin today, um, ayan, so just please type in uh, where are you working or sang school po ba tayo uh, and our location, ayan. So let me see some answers on our chat box, ayan. Okay, so I can see, ayan, may nagta-type na po. <laughs> so... Ayan, anong school, ano, ano pong school kayo and the location itself. Okay, so we have here from Southern Leyte. Ayan, Southern, meron din, and dami-dami po, Palumpon. Ayan, all are in Visayas uh, Region 8. Marami po, from Region, uh, Ched, Region, uh, Regional Office, Region 8. Ayan, hello po sa inyo. Uh, meron tayo from... Uh, Colegio de San Ayan, wala <laughs> Ayan, ang, ang bilis kasi Ang daming Palumpon uh, uh, Palumpon Institute of Technology Meron din po tayo From Eastern Zamar State University Ayan, hello po sa inyo dyan From Asia College and Advanced Studies In Arts and Sciences and Technologies Incorporated Meron din po tayo from St. Mary's Of Katbalogan Ayan, hello po sa inyo dyan lahat sa mga Tagakatbulogan po natin ng mga joiners. Ayan. Good afternoon po. And hi and uh, shout out na rin po sa ating mga joiners uh, sa ating webinar today from uh, Summer Colleges Incorporated at uh, Katbalogan City. Ayan. We also have from St. Paul's School of Professional Studies from Palo Leyte. We have from Northwest Summer State University, Calbayog City and ADFC Tacloban City. So hello po sa ating mga uh, joiners of our for our webinar today uh, from Leyte and Samar because this is for uh, Region 8. Ayan. So expectedly, our joiners for today is from Region 8. So guys, we welcome you once again for our webinar on ICT proficiency exam. Uh, siyempre po, uh, 
uh, I would just like to let everybody know that we are live from our VC2 Facebook Live. Ayan. Ayan. So live na live po tayo mga uh, joiners, no? And of course, we would like to remind everyone to sign up for our attendance link later on. Meron tayong attendance link. So check on our chat box and that will be the basis of our uh, certificates po. Okay? So as we start today, and ayan, uh, nabati na po natin yung mga, uh, mga joiners natin for today. So uh, let's have with our opening prayer and that will be led uh, to us with our member of the ICT besides Cluster 2 Region 7. Uh, Sir Gerald Alforque, and that will be followed by a national, I national anthem, Philippine National Anthem, which will be played on our AVP. And so, yeah, let's go and let's proceed, Sir Gerald. So, good afternoon, everyone. So, let's start with a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, I thank you for this day. Um, we thank you for this opportunity that we gather here to to learn and to grab some new ideas and knowledge about this topic. May you guide the speakers, may you guide the host, may you guide everyone who is listening and participating in this event. And this we ask in the name of Jesus, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Back to you, Sir Jerry. Let's proceed with our Philippine National Anthem. It will be played through our AVP. Okay, so well, uh, checking on our monitor or system right now, because we check po po natin, uh, yung, uh, we don't know what why it's not working. But anyway, let's just wait. Ayan na po. So let's remain ourselves on uh, to have for this our Philippine national anthem. So let's just. Thank you so much, po, uh, Sir Gerald Alforque, our uh, dashing debonair of Visayas Cluster 2, Region 7. Ayan, napakapogi po yan, eh, Sir Gerald, kung nakikita niyo lang yan. <laughs> Anyways, guys, ayan, uh, as we proceed, uh, we would just like to everybody to know that we have our house rules. Ayan. So before we are going to have our opening remarks, let me just read to you our house rules. Ayan. So, ayan, makinig po tayo. Number one, we have to turn off our mic. Ayan. If meron po tayong speakers, uh, only the speakers will speak, okay? And do not click on our share button and stay until the end of this webinar so that you will be able to get your certificates, okay? So that will be our simple house rules for today. 
So now, as we proceed, and I am so excited uh, with our uh, webinar today, so let me just welcome our very own, to give us an opening remarks, let me just welcome our very own beautiful and very active uh, ILC DV Focal of Visayas Cluster 2, Region 7 and 8. Let's all welcome Mom Marian Gosoko to give us an opening remark. Uh, thank you, Sir Jeric. Good afternoon, everyone. To our civil service representative, Angela Puba, si Don Mark Philip de los Reyes. Wow, sir. Good afternoon po. To I saw Ma'am Nelly Labrada. Good afternoon po, Ma'am. To our dear participants who are here with us today, medyo marami to mention you all. Good afternoon, everyone po. To Ms. Claire Fernandez, who will be discussing about PNPKI, our focal, focal for PNPKI here in Region 8. And we uh, saw with Engineer Dante Rosales, our provincial officer for the summer provinces. We also have here uh, Sir Chadi Estudillo, our Tech for Ed co coordinator, who will be discussing to you about Tech for Ed project of the ICT. And of course, our our moderator, Sir Jeric Boyante, to our ILCDB staff, to Ma'am Rodinas, to, to Miss Hazel, to Aris, and everyone po. Good afternoon, everyone. Maopen ako lupa yung adanan. We are from ICT Literacy Competency Development Bureau or ILCDB of the ICT of Visayas Cluster 2 comprising Region 7 and 8. And in behalf of our Regional Director, Director Frederick Amores, uh, I would like to welcome you and uh, to discuss regarding that I, this ICT proficiency, which is the main uh, main topic for, for this afternoon. Uh, we will, the ICT kasi, we will be conducting this year to the different issues and colleges offering, especially the computer pro, computer programming programs and activities of the ICT also under the ILCDB. This is under the ICT capacity development program in the country side. So we're in SUCs po is one of our major partner and we are very much thankful po for the invitation shared to you or given to you by our CHED regional, regional Director, Director George Colorado. That's why you are here po. So one component of the ICT industry and countryside development program under the certification management, it it ito na nga po, is the conduct of ICT proficiency diagnostic examination and the conduct of ICT proficiency certification examinations, which will be discussed deeply by our team, Mr. Gerald. For this year, uh, yun na po, we, we will be implementing eight diagnostic examinations together na po yun with Region 7. Region 7 and 8 na po yun. So, but, but then three years back, we already implemented this na. So, very recently nga, I received uh, the result the, of the conducted uh, conducted assessment of diagnostic exam, ICT diagnostic exam in, in Katbalogan. So, I have here the results. May mga pumasa at meron din hindi pumasa. So, Implementation of the certification examinations to the passers of the diagnostic exams are qualified to take the certification examinations, which is equivalent to civil service professional eligibility. That is why we we uh, invited uh, our civil service representative here. So we are here to seek help from you Paul, in the implementation of this. So that is why uh, uh, our chair director invited you all here Paul. So. Uh, we we have also uh, projects from the ICT, uh, especially with uh, pertains to ILCDB. We have the this uh, uh, the DJT, the DJT. Uh, maybe I'll just discuss a brief only of that. Uh, we we will be discussing. Uh, we have this DJT, the Digital Job PH for for our especially sa ating mga mga kababayan na wala pang mga trabaho at ating mga students na na graduate na na wala pa wala pang mga trabaho they can they can 
also join with our training which we, we, we will be posting it naman in every provinces kasi for this year we will be conducting at least two digital job DJT PH na training for them to be an online freelancer yun mas kay nandito ka lang sa bahay you are with your family and then uh, kikita ka na especially this pandemic na very timely po na uh, you don't need to go out to be going outside, nasa bahay ka lang, may trabaho ka na. So, so much for that. Um, with this pala, uh, uh, I'm very much thankful for your presence here today. And thank you very much. Sana we will be collaborating more pa for the betterment of our mga students and for the betterment of our country. Thank you po and mabuhay po tayong lahat. Good afternoon, everyone. All right. So thank you so much uh, for that, Ma'am Marian, for that warm welcome po sa, uh, for our opening remarks. And of course, uh, for further questions, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we would like to inform everybody that meron po tayong chat box. If you do have further questions, just please uh, type in there, dyan sa ating uh, chat box. Ayan, at uh, meron tayong Q&A later on. So we, we will have a time for that. Okay, so as... We proceed, uh, mga joiners, or uh, sa mga umaten po sa ating webinar today as we proceed uh, to give us the detailed information in reference to our webinar today. Uh, the discussion on the ICT proficiency examination. And without further ado, let me introduce and welcome our speaker uh, to introduce to us regarding our uh, ICT uh, proficiency our very own dashing debonair of our <laughs> region seven and the ICT besides class or two that's none other than the training specialist and also one of the ilcdb coordinator let's welcome mr gerald alforque sir sir jerick thank you <laughs> thank you thank you so much for that very warm welcome and Maupay nga, is that correct? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for giving us your special moment in sharing this ICT proficiency. And we hope that we can have this examinations also in Region 8. Because uh, actually, we are already starting here in Cebu. And we are targeting some local provinces here in the area. So without further ado, let me go ahead and share my slide. Okay, so ICT proficiency. So the good thing about this one is you can take the exam and be eligible. So this is one of our advocacies in also helping those people who are working in the government, especially those in the IT department or in the IT sector. So our objective here is an innovative and tangible method of measuring ICT skills. So as an IT graduate myself, uh, there are times that we are really challenged in applying for a job. And I know, uh, hindi sa lahat ng oras, uh, if you're a graduate, you could definitely land a job. Uh, there are other people who are also qualified or also skillful. That's why I, uh, the ICT came up with this advocacy or this project in helping those people land a job aside from those big companies in the country. And also uh, a model of education and training in the information society. So I know for a fact that in the ICT sector, every month or every quarter or every year, there's always innovation. Because there's a saying, innovation meets demand. So if we need to have that certain demand, we need also to innovate, especially in some sectors in the government. We need to also let them know that these are the new trends. These are the new things that they need to equip, them, equip themselves with. And also an excellent benchmark for employee skills. 
So for example, uh, if you're a graduate and you need to apply for a job, there are certain benchmarks for you to be hired. So you need to have your portfolio, you need to have your sample works, all of those things to really know that you are very capable in applying for the position or for the job that you are really passionate about. So that's why we need to have this proficiency just to check before you get some, what they call this, uh, bago ka mahayar. For example, in the government, it's really that um, tawag nito, uh, challenging because actually there are lots of people applying for jobs in the government because the government has some good opportunities and this could also boost your, um, what they call this, um, personality or your character and attitude, if you like. And also a positive return on investment in IT training. So for example, if you're a graduate in this school and uh, we got lots of um, good feedbacks about this one, about you as an applicant, it's really a big factor. And it will also help the community of ICT uh, educators or training centers that you are also doing these things just to have a good quality education. So uh, what are the scopes? So we do have uh, basic computer concepts like um, internal data representation, software systems, and hardware components. And we do also have the programming and stages of programming development. So problem analysis, the design, the coding, the testing, debugging, and program documentations. We do also have the system development life cycle, file, access method, programming languages, programming environments, internet, and the networking. And aside from programming, we also have for the SAD, or the systems analysis and design. So this is another track, uh, another branch in this ICT proficiency examination aside from the programming. So in the SAD or the systems analysis and design, we have management. So organizations, structures and functions, information system development like cycle. So there's the system investigation, fact finding, system requirements, logic design, output, input design, file, and computer process design. So basically the systems analysis and design is more on the general aspect of the company. For example, how do you manage to do this stuff? How do you find ways? How do you innovate? How do you um, get these things done in advance? A, uh, like a doctor, you have this diagnosis and stuff, and then you can conclude that these are the things that we need to do for the system or for the company. And we do have the systems control, testing and maintenance, information system development and methodologies, and communication skills. So uh, expected outcomes and output. So the test is a mechanism to evaluate the competence of an individual to perform programming or systems analysis and design. So it's basically a, an exam just to check your uh, general knowledge after you graduate in college. And we do have that the, te the test can be used by individuals to assist his or her knowledge for the purpose of continually improving on his or her own technical abilities. It's also a good way to check as individuals, as ourselves, on what part we need to, to change, we need to adapt, we need to learn and equip ourselves. Because as an ICT educator, an ICT graduate, every single month, every single day, there are new ways, new technologies, new things that we need to um, enjoy. We need to learn from this because uh, learning is a continuous process. And it's also fun learning new things that you could really still feel yourself na batan on pa ka or you're still young because of learning new things. And also, uh, by, by knowing the nature and scope of the test, ICT training centers are encouraged to enrich their curricula to enable their students to have a better chance of joining the corp 
or the competent ICT professionals. So again, uh, if you're a graduate looking for a job, there's also a part, uh, a part for you in the government that you could try to apply and have a stable job. If not, this could also be one of the factors or a good background that you could apply for other companies because you started from a government, you passed this examination, and it's what you call a, a good feedback to you and for the company that you're applying for. Because you have passed this one, you have the certain background from them, it's a good start for you. So the sectors and serve beneficiaries, so we have the NGAs, the national government agencies, the regional or satellite offices, we have the state, private and local government, universities, colleges, faculty, student, and staff. So we do have also the LG or the local government units and the general public. So in the ICT proficiency examination, we usually target those uh, people that are, what they call this, uh, who are fresh graduates or unemployed or who would like to have a, an, an eligibility equivalent to the civil service. And it's also a good start because you have this one, aside from taking the civil service as an IT individual or an IT graduate, you could also apply for this certain exam that you could really land a job or it could add to your resume for yourself. So uh, these are the frequent asked questions. So what is the exam certification all about? So it's designed to evaluate the competence of an individual to perform programming or the systems and analysis design function. So uh, what civil service eligibility will be granted? So the EDP specialist or EDPSE shall be conferred to passers of the proficiency certification exam or passers of the training courses conducted by the Department of Information and Communications Technology through the National ICT Competency Management Service. So granted pursuance to CSC resolution number 90-083 dated January 12, 22, 1990. So what positions can be eligible be applied to? So for the EDP, shall be considered appropriate only to functionally related positions belonging to the IT or management information group. So again, this exam targets the ICT graduates or people who have, who are a bachelor's degree and has a background in programming or in systems analysis and design. So, and to other positions as may be determined by the CSC, provided under item number eight, part five of CSC MC number 12, 2003, revised, revi uh, revised policies on qualification standards. So what are the benefits of the proficiency? So uh, the exam can be used as an, a substitute equivalent to civil service profession, uh, professional eligibility uh, by supervisors to evaluate the competence of current or would-be programmers in systems analysis. An individual to assist or her knowledge and skills for the purpose of continually improving, so what I have mentioned a while ago, and some ICT centers to enrich their curricula to enable their students to have a better chance of joining the corporation competency ICT professionals. Again, this is only a gauge. So aside, uh, for example, maybe there are some companies who would like to ask if you have some certificates or something like that. This is also one, is one of the gateways or one of the things that you could give to them with a very good um, credit to yourself. So what's the proficiency certification process? So all prospective examinees will be assessed by the authorized DICT representative. So for example, in Cebu, it's me and my partner, Ms. Rudina Soterio. The tool which the Competent Standard and Certification Management, or CSCM division, will design will be written examinations that will assess the examiner's knowledge in programming. 
And the score obtained from the assessment form 30%. The total score of the examinee should be, or she passed the assessment and takes the hand-on certification. So there's a two process here. One is the written. And after that individual passes the exam, he or she will now proceed to the diagnostic exam. And then there are certain programming languages that will be provided to them, and that individual will choose among those languages. So, um, so in the proficiency process, also in the build, those who will not have the assessment may have to undergo additional hours of training or learning activities that will enhance examinees' knowledge and skills in programming. It's strongly recommended that universities use the programming curriculum of the ICT or have their own curriculum accredited by the department through its national ICT competency management service. And the certified, those who pass the assessment will be eligible to take the ICT proficiency examination, which will be administered by the authorized CSCM staff. So that will be our central office. This hands-on examination is a six-hour simple application development using examiners' preferred languages. Passing for this exam is 70. Again, after they pass the written exam, they will now proceed to the diagnostics, which will be six hours. And by the way, the written exam is only two hours, and that would be free. The diagnostic, after you pass the written exam, there will be a fee for that. Okay, let me proceed. So an, an examinee who gets a total rating of 80% or higher is considered ICT proficient. So hence, he or she will be conferred with the ICT certificate of ICT proficiency, which is the basis of CSE's Conferment of the EDP ICT specialist eligibility. So again, before that certain individual could have the eligibility, he or she needs to pass those two examinations, the written and the diagnostics. So who can take the exam? So basically, it should be the Filipino citizen, a bachelor's degree holder, or will graduate before the exam date. Okay. So as certified by the dean of the school, and must have undergone formal training in college or trading institutions in the area of programming. Again, who can take the exam? So it should be a Filipino, a bachelor's degree, and students who will proceed graduating this year and should ask for the certificate from the dean that should, uh, that should be submitted to us that you are a graduate for this coming um, March or for the October yes. So here are the, co uh, the coverage for the examination. So the topical coverage for the assessment on hands-on as follows. So we have the program simulation, we have number system, data structure, system development life cycle, OOP, or what we call the object-oriented programming concepts, network concepts, file access, and database. Concept. That is for the programming part or for the assessment of the written. Then we have the hands-on, so we have the data manipulation, file handling, and database manipulation. I'm sorry for that one. So here are the examples or what languages that will be used in the exam. So we have the C language, C Sharp, C++, Java, Visual Basic version 6, and VB.net. So maybe somebody will ask us later why only this one. Uh, we are also trying to adapt more languages. So we are already talking to some of the people in our central office and in the civil service for this one, asking for additional languages, because I know there are new languages and there are new uh, things that students are learning. As I know this languages here are a bit uh, not that old, but it's uh, been used by most of us. But 
today's graduate, they have other preference aside from this one. But as of now, these are the only six choices that we have for the programming for the ICT proficiency. So uh, the process would be uh, individual interested to take the examination should accomplish the, the form. So the form, we will have the form online, so we will post it in our Facebook account in the ICT. And to submit the cluster focal person or to the registrar in the central office. For example, if you are near to our office, we could get your application, but you need to apply it online. We, because of the pandemic, we do not give the hard copies to them. We provide it online so they can download it anytime, anywhere, anytime, so they could fill it out. And after that, they need to send it back to us with their passport size of two copies. Again, that would be two copies of the picture. So again, uh, those who pass the assessment will take the proficiency certification and the above mentioned following. These are the requirements again. So uh, passport ID, there are two copies. You need to have your TOR or certified two copies of your transcript of records. Duly authenticated by the register of the school. And for those who are graduating for the examination date or certificate, you need to ask a certification from your dean if you are a graduate for this coming March or October. And candidates should have taken some ICT subjects in college. And don't forget your NSL copy. Okay? So uh, what are the things that we need or the support that we need from the SUCs and the HEIs. Um, we ask for your help in promoting this examination through advocacy caravan and social media platform. Um, as much as possible, students take the exam for career development. Encourage, if possible, all ICT teachers to take the examination and uh, coordinate with the ICT in scheduling or facilitating the exams in schools, offering ICT-related courses, and conduct some mock exams, reviews, before the student takes the exam using the topical guidelines of the ICT. And once again, uh, my name is Gerald John Alforque from the Department of Information and Communications Technology from the Desires Foster 2. I thank you for your time, and mabuhay po tayo. Sir Jarek, back to you. Thank you so much, uh, Sir Gerald, for uh, giving us the clear information about ICT proficiency examination and what it's all about, what are the requirements, and who are eligible to take the exam? What are the benefits for this exam? So, ayun po, uh, joiners, uh, we've heard the clear, uh, clear information, uh, the background of our ICT proficiency webinar. So, thank you so much once again, Sir Gerald, and... Of course, and uh, before we are going to proceed with our one of our main speak, speaker for today, I would like to say hi and hello to our mga joiners from uh, VC2 Live. Ayan, meron tayong mga joiners around 70. Uh, nandiyan sila and of course, uh, marami pong nag-join sa atin uh, dito sa ating webinar. So without further ado, another interesting topic which will be delivered to us today and that will be regarding uh, applying for the Electronic Data Processing Specialist Eligibility, or EDPSE. So, uh, our speaker for today is a senior HRS at Civil Service Commission in Region 8. So, that's none other than, let's all welcome Mr. Don Mark Philip D. De Los Reyes. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, I think naka naka mute po. Hello. Good morning. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon po. Okay. So, good afternoon to each and everyone. Uh, first of all, my uh, congratulations and respect to the ICT team, to our uh, subject matter uh, uh, experts who are here in this afternoon. Uh, giving information uh, for our listeners. Uh, I believe we have students. We have students here. Tama ho ba? 
Sir Jeric. Okay. So uh, without further ado, ano, um, I'm I was tasked by uh, uh, the office to share to you the uh, uh, requirements for the uh, uh, processing of electronic data uh, processing specialist eligibility or the EDPSE. Uh, this is a special uh, eligibility granted by the Commission. Uh, for the information of everybody, you know, uh, one of the uh, main thrust of the Commission is to uh, uh, strengthen the meritocracy in the government service. And precisely, we are conducting, we are conducting se series of exams uh, relative to it. But aside from those examinations, we also grant special eligibilities. Uh, as uh, for example, we have the honor graduate eligibility, we have the barangay official eligibility, uh, and others. I know, marami, marami pang mga special eligibility. There is no need for a, uh, an examination for that. Uh, one of these uh, special eligibilities mentioned is the uh, electronic data processing specialist eligibility. Uh, when we were invited by uh, the team to uh, have a talk on the processing of the EDPSE, we were quite, we were quite surprised because uh, when we saw our database of eligibles of EDPSE, we found out that uh, we have only eight eligibles. Walo lang ho ang eligibles ng EDP. Uh, it's quite surprising. Sabi namin, siguro mahirap yung ano, yung proficiency test at saka yung training requirements. So, uh, as of 2016, uh, mayroon lang kaming dalawang ano, na process na EDP. As of 2017, mayroon kaming apat na na process. In 2018, we do not have any applicants for EDP. And in 2019, we have two. So uh, in 2020, unfortunately, we, we didn't also have because I think it was due to uh, the current situation, ano, yung pandemic natin. So, uh, but with this uh, forum, ano, we are hoping that uh, in the next uh, several months, we will be receiving uh, applications from uh, for uh, electronic data processing specialist eligibility. Nevertheless, uh, let me go now with uh, to my uh, presentation. So, uh, okay. Okay, so nakikita na ho ba? Hello? Wala pa po, sir. Wala pa? Okay, so here are the processes in uh, uh, receiving uh, the electronic data processing specialist eligibility. Of course, as mentioned earlier by our previous speaker, uh, Sir Gerald, if I'm not mistaken, mistaken, the qualifications for uh, the EDPS eligibility, uh, one should be a passer of proficiency test or a training course. So, kailangan nakapasa siya, of course. Uh, a certification, a proof of uh, certification is needed for us to, uh, to uh, process the EDP uh, eligibility. Uh, of course, uh, it should come from the, it should be issued by the uh, ICT, no? This was formerly, this is formerly from the National Computer Center. Okay. So, uh, what is the appropriateness of the EDPSE? 
the EDPSE shall be considered appropriate only to positions for which the eligibility was given. So, to other functionally related positions belonging to information technology, management information system group, such as data encoder, data machine operator, auxiliary machine operator, data encoder controller, we have computer programmer, information system analyst, and other positions as may be determined by the commission. This is provided under item number 8, part 5 of CSCMC number 12, series of 2003, or the revised policies on qualification standards. Okay, so these are the, the uh, positions, uh, appropriate positions under this eligibility uh, program. So for the date of effectivity, the take note that the approval of date of application of the CSC RO or F, uh, the CSC regional office concern is the uh, date of effectivity, yung approval date niya. That's why when you process uh, for our perspective uh, uh, applicants, no, once we receive the, uh, the documents, the complete documents, and requirements for uh, processing of electronic data processing specialist eligibility, uh, we are given three days to process the same. So the uh, normally what we do is we include them in our database. We encode them in our database and after the following month, uh, we will be generating the master list of that special eligibility so for again for the date of effectivity it should be it shall be the approval date of application of the concerned CSCRO or regional office okay so take note the period of application for the EDPSE shall be filed within three years from the date of issuance of the ICTO certificate of proficiency. In other words, from the time na na-issue ho yung, yung certification na in ng ICTO, it should be reckoned three years therefrom. After three years, hindi na ho valid yung certificate of proficiency niya. So what will happen here is uulit siya ng pagtake ng uh, proficiency test or training. Okay, so uh, what are then the documentary requirements? For uh, the first documentary requirement, we have a properly accomplished application form or the CSC form uh, 101-A, revised December 2011. Uh, please take note that this form is downloadable at csc.gov.ph. You can even Google uh, the same. So, makikita rin ho ito sa Google. But for sure, we have a downloadable form at csc.gov.ph. The second requirement is the three identical ID pictures taken within the last three months prior to the filing of application. So, you will see in your slides the correct and the wrong way to uh, uh, the wrong way or the wrong picture to submit. Take note on the uh, the correct or that picture uh, na may check. That is the correct illustration of the ID picture. So it is a passport size ID picture. Uh, 4.5 centimeters by 3.5 centimeters yung size niya. So it is printed in quality photo paper in white background in standard close-up shot in bare face showing left and right ears then with full name tag. So you see the difference ano, 
between the uh, first and the second illustration. So, yung correct... Sir, time, sir so, excuse me po yes. to interrupt. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We cannot see po your presentation. Wala, wala po ba? to show. Yes po. Yes po, sir. Uh, actually, natay po namin yung presentation earlier. Oh, okay. Uh, just give me time, ha? Huh? Uh, okay po, sir. No problem po. Sige, take your time po. Okay. So, currently so, po... Uh, 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 sir Jeric, just, uh, 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 just tell me, ha, kung ano, kung... Kasi di ko, sige po, kasi sir. We will wait for the presentation. Baka po ma... Uh, okay. present natin na yan. So, tignan po natin. So, anyway, uh, while uh, Sir uh, Don is preparing for the presentation, ayan, so... I would like to ayan, say hi and hello <laughs> sa ating mga live viewers po sa ating Facebook Live sa DICTV Science Cluster 2. And of course, I would like to uh, say hi and hello sa ating mga joiners din na nasa... Uh, ayan. So, nandyan po sila. Uh, Marami-rami din po palang mga nag-join sa atin sa ating... Uh, Facebook Live. So let me go through there. Hello, uh, hello, and happy, uh, happy viewing, po. <laughs> Ayan, and uh, enjoying the uh, <clears throat> presentation, po, ng ating webinar today. Ayan, marami po sila. Pero mostly po sa nang sa nag join dito, no. Uh, hindi lang po from Region Eight. I can see there are from Region Seven, and of course. Uh, I would like to acknowledge our uh, friends, no, na makasama po natin dito sa VI, uh, DICTV Science Cluster 2 from Region 7 and 8. Ayan. So, maraming maraming salamat po for always uh, gracing your time with us. Ayan. So, marami po talagang, uh, siguro later on po, uh, yung mga questions po, i-accommodate po natin. Kasi andito, andito pa naman yung mga speakers natin. So, while Sir... Sir Jerry? Yes po? Okay na ho ba? Uh, wala pa rin po. Uh, is it okay po? if pwede natin ma-forward to uh, Sir Chaddy or Miss Hazel yung presentation so they can help you out on that, sir? Uh, okay. Kung yes. Ano kasi na-share ko naman yun. <laughs> na-share ko mm. na kasi yun. Okay. Currently po, uh, wala po kaming nakikita sa slide or sa, 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 uh, sa screen regarding Ayan sa po. presentation nyo. Ayan. Ayan. Currently, you're trying, yeah, you're presenting. So let's okay check. Na. Ayan po. Ayan. Okay na. Po natin. Yes. <laughs> There you have it. <laughs> Ayan. Finally. Ayan. So, okay. Finally, we are there. <laughs> Ayan. So, there you go. Konting ano na lang po. Okay, so uh, we proceed with the, ano, with the, uh, saan na ho ba tayo na, na medyo na, okay? So, tapos na ho ito yung, ano? Yes po. Okay. Nakikita no, Sir Jerry? Yes po. Kitang-kita uh, na po yung <laughs> uh, na-share po niyo po na screen. Ayan, ayan. Andiyan na po sa screen natin. Alright. So, currently po na nasa white screen tayo. <laughs> Oo, nagahang siya eh. Nagahang pa. Okay po. You may continue ba? Ayan. Ayan po. Ayan. There you go. Okay sir. Proceed. Okay. Okay. So dito na tayo sa documentary requirements. Pasensya na ho. Hindi ho ano eh. Hindi ho IT yung <laughs> 
yung speed. No problem po, sir. <laughs> Ganun po talaga minsan sumasabit. Okay, so as Okay, thank you, sir Jerry. So we continue, ano, as I uh, as I was mentioning earlier, so these are the uh, the uh, illustrations, ano, of the ID pictures. Ano yung yung correct, ano yung mali. So you will notice on the left side, left picture, eto ho yung tama, uh, printed siya in quality paper. Tapos you look at the, ano, you look at the, uh, you look at the uh, face of the uh, uh, applicant. So naka ano yung book niya? Nakikita yung left and right ears niya. Then we have the full name tag. So yung 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 ano natin diyan, yung format is first name, middle initial and family name. Kung meron hong extension, ilagay ho sa extension. Um, and then, signature above printed name. Meron nung kasi ibang uh, nagsasubmit, yung ginagawa nila, uh, picture muna tapos nilalagyan nila ng sticker sa ibabaw, yung pangalan nila. Don't do that po ha, kasi we will not honor that. So this is the correct uh, picture requirement. Okay? So we proceed. Okay, so ito ho yung ano, yung yung illustration naman kung ano yung itsura ng picture some would submit yung mga pictures na medyo malayo yung mukha nila so uh, this is the ano this this should look like this kung magpapa picture kayo okay so the distance between the chin and the upper edge of the name tag actual 1 inch and then the picture is 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 centimeter. So name tag, actual size about 12 inches length and uh, 2 inches to 2.5 inches width. So the picture size is about 0 0.08 centimeters width. And then the lower edge of the name tag should go with the bottom edge of the picture. Okay, so meron namang sample ano. Uh, you can uh, you can have your pictures naman sa mga professional na mga photographers. Meron naman ho. Uh, yung iba, sinasabi lang nila na this is a picture uh, requirement para sa civil service and they know it already. Okay? So, number three documentary requirements. We have original and photocopy of ID cards. So, what are the ID cards mentioned here? We have the current office or company ID. We have the school ID. But take note, when we speak of school ID, it presupposes that the uh, applicant is still a student. It should be validated for the current year. Kung nag-graduate na ho yung, ano, yung student, yung school ID ceases to be valid. To be valid. So hindi na siya valid. Uh, we will know that because once uh, the student presents their ID, uh, tinatanong namin kung are they currently a uh, student or are they graduated or, or have they graduated already. Okay? So, duly validated for the current year. So, we, have, we also have the GSIS and SSS uh, UMID. Okay? We have the passport. Uh, the driver's license, PRC license, the BIR or TIN ID, police clearance with picture, voter's ID, pill health ID, postal ID, barangay ID. Any other ID other than those uh, listed above is not accepted, will not be accepted. By the way, uh, I was not able to uh, include here the NBI clearance. We now accept the NBI clearance as a valid ID. Okay? So we proceed. So number four documentary requirement is the original and photocopy of birth certificate authenticated or issued by the NSO. So, original and photocopy. 
For female married applicants, uh, we have the original and photocopy of marriage certificate. Okay? So another documentary requirement, we have the certificate of no pending administrative or criminal case. This is actually uh, CSE Spence Form Number 1, series of, or dated April 2012. So we have here the sample, ano? Uh, this uh, form can also be downloaded sa website ng CSC. So the CSC dot gov dot ph so this is the form so others ano when pag nakita nila yung certificate of no pending administrative or criminal case yung ginagawa nila is they go to um ano tawag dito sa court that is not the required form this is the required form csc spells form number one uh, dated april 12 okay so again Pwede hong ma-download yung document. Okay. So, aside from the documentary requirements uh, presented earlier, we have specific documentary requirements also. Number one, of course, it has to go hand in hand with the uh, requirements on training courses. No? So, Ano yung hinihingi namin? Yung original and certified copy of certificate of proficiency issued by the ICTO or the uh, on the following computer courses. We have the systems analysis and design, computer programming, Java, MS Access, or Visual Basic. Then we have the original and photocopy of certificate of completion issued by the ICTO. And we have the original and photocopy of grade slip issued by the ICTO. For proficiency test, we require the original and certified copy of the certificate of proficiency issued by the ICTO on the following computer courses. Again, systems analysis and design, computer programming, Java, MS Access, or Visual Basic. So, the other uh, documentary, specific documentary requirements for under proficiency test is the original and photocopy of notification slip. Okay? So these are the required specific documentary requirements. Aside from those uh, requirements presented earlier. Okay. So, what are the modes of filing? Saan ho tayo nagfa-file ng application? So, the applicant may in-person file his or her application in the regional office, in the CSC regional office, or the CSC field office concern. If, for example, you are uh, in Maasing City or anywhere in Southern Leyte, we have a field office there in Maasin City. If you are uh, located in northern Samar or you live in the northern part of Samar, we have the northern Samar field office. So pwede ho silang mag-receive na ng application ng ADP. If you are uh, located in... Uh, Eastern Samar, meron nung kaming office sa uh, Burongan, Burongan City. In Ormoc, we have the Western Data Satellite Office. Um, in Samar, we have Katbalogan, Samar, uh, Samar Field Office. Okay? So, it could also, you could also file through a representative kung if you are not uh, currently in the regional office, pwede ho sa ano, sa mag -ano kayo ng representative. So, if it is filed through a representative, it could be your parents, it could be your sister, it could be your brother, or even a friend. Kung uh, authorization, uh, kung uh, application is through a representative, the additional requirement would be an authorization letter authorizing that representative to transact business at our office. 
and the original and photocopy of at least one valid card of the representative. So yun lang ho ang hinihingi natin if it is uh, done or if the application is through a representative. Now, you could also uh, file through mail. Pwede hong sa mail. Pwede nyo hong ipadala sa amin. So, uh, that could be a mode of uh, application. And lastly, we have through conduit regional office. Let's say, for example, you, were, uh, you, you took the exam here in Region 8 or in Cebu. Doon ka nag-take ng examination. And when you, when, when, uh, nag-file ng application rather, I mean, nag-take ng proficiency exam. Of course, uh, later on, dito ka na-assign because of your work, dito ka na-assign sa Region 8. You could ask the CSC regional office in in uh, Cebu to uh, have the requirements processed. Uh, then submit it here to the regional office. Bali, uh, that is uh, what we mean by conduit CSC regional office. So. Region to region, CSC Regional Office 7 to CSC Regional Office 8. So, uh, pwede hong ganun yung gagawin natin. Uh, especially these times of uh, pandemic, ano. Uh, normally, sa operations namin, we do not, we do not uh, uh, accept applications kung yung, ano, yung, yung, jurisdiction and special eligibility was made in Region 7. Let's say, for example, ano, uh, yung honor graduate uh, is uh, was made or yung honor graduate eligibility was processed in Region 7 because this student, itong studyante na to, is uh, a student in, uh, let's say, for example, San Carlos. Um, special eligibilities kasi are jurisdictional in nature. Meaning, kung saan nag apply yung ano, yung yung applicant at doon na process, doon talaga siya kukuha ng eligibility, ng certificate of eligibility. Uh, we could not, in Region 8, give the eligibility because um, Jurisdictional nga. The records are with the central of uh, the uh, CSC Region Seven, but because of this pandemic, ano nag-adjust tayo. So anything na niri request ng Region Seven, uh, niri request ng applicant kung pwede dito sa Region Eight, so we get the the uh, records from the from Region Seven so that we could process the application here in Region 8. So, ganun yung ginagawa natin. That's why uh, one of the modes of application is you can uh, submit the document anywhere in the anywhere uh, wherever you are. So, i-request lang yan sa region o regional office concerned kung saan naka uh, naka submit ng application. Okay? So, we proceed with uh, the next. We now go to the schedule of fees. Uh, for the schedule of fees for special eligibilities, we have for evaluation of application, uh, we initially uh, uh, received the amount of 200 pesos for evaluation fee. This is upon filing of the application. Now, the stage two is the processing of COE. Now, once the uh, the COE has already been uh, approved, the application has already been approved, then we process the COE uh, in the amount of 300 pesos. So, all in all, yung, spells, uh, yung special eligibility fees is 500 pesos. 
Okay? So, 500 pesos. Okay? So, I think uh, that ends my uh, my uh, presentation. Siguro mamaya, no? If we have uh, if we have questions, I'll be willing to answer. Uh, kung hindi ko ma-answer, I will take note and uh, rest assured, we will give you the, the answer kung uh, makuha natin sa ating mga experts din dito sa regional office. So with that, uh, thank you so much uh, for listening. Back to you, Sir Jeric. Thank you so much, Sir. So, ayan, uh, Sir Don Mark for sharing to us about the electronic data processing and thanks also sir for the inputs about the do's and don'ts and how to apply what are the requirements and the processes in applying no so hopefully this year sir marami na pong mag-apply for 2021 yes, more sir, applicants yeah. for eligibility so, uh, Ayan. we would be glad we would be glad to accept yes so just please stay yeah. sir uh, there will be we will have a question and answer later on so thank you sir gerald can the Share. Okay. Uh, one moment. So with this, we would like to uh, thank um, Sir Sir Don, no, Sir Don Mark for uh, one of our main speakers for today. Uh, the certificate of appreciation is hereby given to Don Mark Philip D. De Los Reyes. Grateful acknowledgement. For being one of the speakers in the webinar on the ICT proficiency examination with the topic of applying for the electronic data processing specialist eligibility or EDPSE conducted by the Department of Information and Communications Technology, Visayas Cluster 2 on March 12, 2021 at 1.30 p.m. to 4.20 p.m. And this is signed by our OIC Office of the Regional Director, the ICT Visayas Cluster 2, our very own uh, Frederick uh, D.C. Amores. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir, Jerry. All right. So now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as we continue, uh, it's time for us to introduce some of our projects in the ICT, and I'm sure our two speakers are eagerly. <laughs> Ayan, excited na po silang i-share po kung ano pong meron sa DICT. So the first speaker will talk about the introduction of PNPKI or the Philippine National Public Key in Infrastructure. And that will be our very own beautiful and very hardworking focal of region, uh, PNPKI focal of Region 8 and also our Provincial Officer of Leyte, that will be Ma'am Claire Fernandez, and to be followed by our um, Tech for Ed coordinator, that, that will be Sir Chadi Estudillo, which will be introducing about the Tech for Ed. So it's going to be back to back. Ayan. <laughs> All right, so let's welcome first our very beautiful and very hardworking um, Ma'am Claire Fernandez. Thank you so much, Sir Jerry. That was sweet, of course. No, syempre, pag mga waray nga niya, maghusay ito, di ba? I mean, yung mga taga-region 8. Of course, kayo oh. din. Lahat tayo magagalala <laughs> kasi bigay ni Anna tayo created ng Panginoon. Okay? Yeah. So, I will now start my presentation. I'm sure marami kayong tanong doon sa proficiency exam, but ano, di ba? Let's just continue muna, then i-hold lot nyo lang muna yung mga, mga tanong nyo. So, once again, good afternoon sa ating lahat, especially sa mga waray, no? Sa mga nasa Cebu at saka nakita ko, no? Marami from all over the Philippines. So, good afternoon everyone. I'll just turn off my camera and then I will um, put up now my presentation. Oh, sorry. Kita na bang presentation ko, Sir Jeric? Yes, Uban. I can see your screen. Yes, and the presentation is up. Sorry. Okay, so good afternoon once again. So I'm Claire Fernandez. No? So this is the introduction to the Philippine National Public Key Infrastructure. So I'm here no, in Region 8, no, dito sa Tacloban City. So hello po sa mga taga-Tacloban. 
Nakita ko po doon sa Google Meet, no, dito sa Google Meet, marami akong kilala, at saka even doon sa Facebook Live. So, magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. So, now, um, let's start. So, mayroon muna akong tanong, no? So, pwede kayo mag-ano na lang doon sa chat box, no? Pakitype na lang ang sagot nyo. ba Especially ngayon, diba? Um, I mean, before, diba? Yung wala pang pandemic. Diba? Ito yung tanong, no? How do you know if branded bags, yung mga shoes or mobile phones are original fake or an imitation. Sige po, sino may sagot, no? 'Di ba? Yung hindi pa pandemic, paano natin nalalaman no yung isang bag na branded or yung sapatos? Alam natin na this is original. Sige nga, patingin nga ng mga sagot nyo. Paano natin nalalaman no kung original ba yung mga sapatos, yung mga bags, no? 'Di ba? Noong unang panahon, mas madali lang before, no, because Pwede mong tingnan doon agad-agad, no? So, sige nga, tingnan na ang mga sagot. So, probably, Ma'am Care, kami, kami yung mga hindi mahilig sa <laughs> branded. Hindi <laughs> namin alam. <laughs> okay, so, sabi ni Sir Rona, di ba, the quality, totoo yun, di ba? Especially pag bags, no? Pag yung mga, alam mo na, made in, yung mga sa ibang made in, mas madali masira, no? Tama din sabi ni Sir Jeffrey, it can last long. Sabi rin ni... Sir Belmar, no? um, quality and the price, yun din, no? malaking factor din yung price quality, sabi ni Miss Maria Wenelu, sabi ni Sir John Melchor, mobile phone, of course, tama po, serial numbers, sabi naman Ma Magdalena, quality ng stitching, tama din, no? sabi ni Miss Christy, the price, tags, and the quality, yan, tamang-tama po yan, no? so ito po yung mga, mga factors na titingnan natin, no? pag bumibili tayo ng mga branded na bags, no? or sapatos. Diba? Basically, we will, we will check the quality. Diba? Yun ang nasabi nyo kanina. Yung quality ng bag. No? Parang, kahit iba, minsan nga sa kulay pa lang, no, alam mo na, no, na imitation ito or toto, ito yung totoo. Diba? Parang ganun. Physical characteristics, no? Sabi nga, diba? Yung quality, yung material na ginamit. Diba? Yung may, 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 may mga tags pa yan. Diba? Minsan yung mga fake, sila pa yung malaki yung tags, no? Parang ganon. So, that's how we look into it, no? But, uh, you, sabi din kayo ni Sir, di ba, yung sa mobile phone naman tama, no? Like, ako kasi, mahilig ako sa Samsung dati, although ngayon, nag-evolve na, no? So, yun, we have to check, di ba, itong IMEI, or the International Mobile Equi Equipment Identity, di ba? So, it's a 15 to 17 digit code that uniquely identifies mobile phone sets. Idadial ka lang, and then, okay na siya. Di ba? So, lalabas na yung, ano mo, kung totoo yung Original ba yung phone mo? But ngayon, no, um, for physical documents, di ba yung mga, sa documents naman, no, paano malalaman natin kung fake ito? Forged or genuine ito? No? So, ako na lang sasagot niyan. Of course, basically, di ba, alam natin, for example, no, sa Philippine Statistics Authority or the PSA, yung documents nila po ay nakaset pa paper, di ba? Ibig sabihin, security paper, di ba? Pag kumukuha tayo ng birth certificate or any, right? di ba sa NBI, meron din silang QR code. Saka talaga makikita mo iba yung quality ng paper na ginagamit. No? And of course, um, yung sa iba naman, especially mga diploma, no, mga documents, these are notarized or may mga silyo yan. Di ba? Especially nakita ko dito, we have some schools, di ba? may mga silyo na ginagamit kayo. Di ba? Para malaman natin na it's really validly executed, acknowledged, and witnessed. So ayan po ang ating tinitingnan. But ngayon, no, ganun, ganun again. No, what about, especially yung pandemic, di ba? Siyempre, paano mo malalaman ng document no, kung totoo yan siya? No? So parang mas, mas mahirap ngayon no, kasi hindi mo na madali makita. So ito po ang gamit ng, uh, ng digital signature, digital certificate natin. No? So for example, no, here in sa DICT, di ba, we encourage the public to avail no, of the digital certificates no, para mas secure talaga yung transactions din yung online, di ba? Kasi how can we ensure that data and documents are safe, untampered, authentic, and secured during transmission over public networks such as the internet, di ba? Marami na ngayon ang mga, <laughs> mga nangyayari sa internet. So, dapat talagang tingnan natin. Okay, um, before I continue, um, if hindi pa kayo nakapag-visit no, ng uh, website namin sa dict.gov.ph, meron din po kami dyan for the Philippine National Public Infrastructure. Ayan, slash, slash PNPKI lang po. So makikita po natin dito yung mga requirements no so you can just visit this later no um once magkaroon na kayo ng time pwede niyo chang tingnan no ano yung mga nandiyan nandiyan yung mga requirements natin as frequently asked questions So basically po ang PKI marami po siyang topic so I will just focus dito sa electronic documents and forms signing so yun lang po ang focus ng presentation ko 
Of course, no, meron din po tayong mga mga YouTube videos, no, pwede nyo rin tinan sa channel namin. So, may mga ganito, no, nandyan na po yan, no, marami yung mga tutorials about the PKI, no, how to install the chain of trust, so marami lang dyan. So, pwede nyo rin po yan, i-visit. So, of course, yung website namin, theict.gov.ph. Okay, so ano ba yung mga issues natin ngayon? Di ba dati, No, di ba, yung magkukuha ng business permit, no, right dito sa Tacloban, di ba, medyo maraming tao, no, napakadaming tao, di ba, alam natin, di ba, it is really very stressful, di ba, time consuming and tiresome, di ba, kasi pabalik-balik ka. Tamang-tama nga yan, especially ngayon, di ba, may pandemic tayo, hindi pwede ganito, no, so, ayan. So, anong ginawa ng government, of course, nagkaroon po na electronic business process licensing system. Diba? No, ganyan na po siya ngayon. No? Um, ito pong EBPLS natin is a software product and web application that enables LGUs to process business permit application electronically. Ayan. Na EBPLS na po tayo. Yan ang solusyon. And of course, no, marami din dati yung mga long lines, no? especially yung sa kumukuha ng clearance no? sa NDI. No? Diba? But of course, ang kagandahan na lang ito ngayon, di ba? Because hindi na siya ganit. Ganito na siya ngayon, di ba? Meron ang NBI clearance online, di ba? Dati pa ito, noong April 1, 2015, di ba? NBI no longer entertain walk-in as it implemented a fully online application process for NBI clearance. So, Tamang-tama, no? Na ngayon, kahit pandemic, hindi na ganun, hindi na, ganun na problema natin. No? What about for fraud documents? No, ito ang mahirap, di ba? Kasi sabi nga ni Oscar Wilde, no? Imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. But when an artist attempts to pass on that imitation as the real thing, it's called forgery. Diba? Forgery involves a false document, signature, or other imitation of an object values used with the intent to deceive another. Diba? So, ngayon, no, kung doon sa recto, ang dalil lang, no, mag magpakuha ka ng transit of records, ng yan mga ID no so di ba nako ganyan na di ba saka ang mura-mura pa di ba para sa atin no di ba pag may problema yung birth certificate natin nako maraming process magbabayad pa ng 1000 maraming kailangan pa ng witness mga documents sabi mo ay doon na lang ako sa recto no kasi mura lang 200 lang but of course di ba of course it's a fraudulent sham so ayan and take note na ito oh may isang kaso dito di ba ng barangay officials kahit sila no they were jailed For falsification, di ba? So, society has relied talaga no, on signatures to ensure authenticity. So, ayan. So, anong solusyon? So, ito na siya, di ba? Kahit mga certificates ngayon, di ba? Kahit sa DICT, meron na yan mga QR code or these are digitally signed. No? So, mga ganyan-ganyan na siya, di ba? Ito na siya, may barcode. Ito, meron din yung OCR, no? Or what we call the optical character recognition. And of course, yung, yung ating nga, yung digital signature. Yan siya. So, what is this PNPPI or the Public Key Infrastructure? Okay? So, this is the Philippine National, our own PKI or Public Key Infrastructure. When we say P, it means public because these are documents meant or the public key to be shared with the public. Siyempre, di ba? Parang, parang tayo na later, no, if we have our certificate, gusto natin yung i-share siya, di ba? So, yan. So, ito yung for public siya, no, yung PTI. When we say key naman, yung letter K, it's the same as the keys we use to secure our important belongings. And of course, when we say infrastructure, because it's just like the basic physical and organizational structures and facilities, diba parang buildings, roads, and power supplies needed for the operation of a society or enterprise. Ayan. So, to be able to have reliable and trusted transactions online, systems must be able to identify the parties they are transacting or communicating with. Using PKI, the digital certificates provide, provide an authoritative way to prove that parties to an online transactions are who they are, who they say they are. So, ayan, diba? so ito po ang damit ng ating Philippine National Public Key Infrastructure. So, as what it says here, the PKI provides mechanism no, for trusted online relationships. So, pang online transaction po siya. To ensure a certificate security of digital data and transactions by providing authentication, confidentiality, integrity, and non-reputation. So, ano ba siya? No? So, of course, when we say authentic authentication or authenticate siya, di ba? Minsan, di ba tayo, when we submit certificate, sabihin, you have to submit the 
the original and the authenticated copy, di ba yun ang sabi. So, when we say authentication and computing, it means the process or action of verifying the identity of a user or process. So, uh, we are used to using username and password. But that doesn't prove who you are. It only proves you know a valid access. Digital certificate, on the other hand, it contains information about us that can be used to determine if you should be given access. Of course, the biggest example dito is yung People Connect or yung tinatawag natin ngayon ng uh, free Wi-Fi project ng DICP. So ano yan, di ba? Like dito sa office, if you visit our office, you can log in it dito sa uh, free Wi-Fi, pu uh, public Wi-Fi namin sa labas. No? Pwede kayo makipag-internet dito sa amin. No? Even sa mga local government units, sa mga public places na meron kami free Wi-Fi, pwede kayo makikonect doon. So, ganyan. Kasi may authentication lang siya na kailangan. Next, no, meron naman tayo, we say confidentiality. So, ano naman siya? So, it's the state of keeping or being kept secret or private. Diba? Through encryption, documents encrypted by your public key can only be opened by your partner private key. Since only you should have a copy of your private key, only you should be able to open documents encrypted with your public key. Of course, importante din yan na pag sa'yo, uh, private key mo sa'yo yan, di ba? Kasi pa i-share mo din yung, ano mo, yung mga confidential na, di ba, yung mga keys mo. Of course, maano ma ma din yan ng iba, ma-access nila. Kasi later, wala ka na control. Next one is we have the integrity. So, ano naman itong integrity, di ba? Integrity here means knowing if the document has been tampered or still in its original state it is nearly impossible to tamper with digitally signed documents changes to digitally signed document remove the digital signature so ayan di ba so parang ito oh, may nag may meron siyang email so sinend niya dito no? so malalaman niya kung naalter siya don't worry later because i'll i'll also show you a demonstration of this no so, what is non-repudiation? So, ang non-repudiation naman, sabi dito, is the assurance that someone cannot deny something. No, no, no denial. Hindi na pwede mag-deny ka dito. So, typically, non-repudiation refers to the ability to ensure that a party to a contract or a communication cannot deny the authenticity of their signature or document or the sending of a message that they originated. Diba? So, dito kasi sa digital search signature natin, once you touch your signature, alam natin na ikaw yan, di ba? Kasi sa ngayon, di ba, or sa yung tradition natin before, pwede lang mag-forge, di ba? Sige, ikaw na lang mag-firma niyan, no? Sige, pakisign na lang yan kasi wala ako dyan. Or minsan, nasyak ka na lang, di ba? Uy, di-forge pala yung signature ko, ano ba yan? But of course, with the digital signature, hindi na yan, hindi na yan mangyayari. So, ano itong digital certificate, no? So, ito po siya yung mga sample, no? So, ito po siya yung digital certificate ko, no? So, Sabi dito, no, yung sa certificate natin, no, we have a, uh, what we call the public key. No? So, info about, ito yung certificate ko, makikita nyo. So, nandiyan po yung pangalan ko, my family name, my first name, then my middle name. And of course, yung certificate mo, meron yung serial number. Tapos, anong, anong, let's say, anong division ka na belong, if you, are, if you work for the government also, or kahit sa private sector. Tapos, lalagyan din natin yan, anong office nyo. And of course, country natin, Philippines, kasi digital, uh, Philippine public key yan, di ba? So, ito naman siya, ito siya. So, uh, dati is sa DOST yung assure, assure ngayon, no? And then, Philippines. Then, ang validity niya actually is two years. So, ibig sabihin po, once you apply for digital signature or digital certificate, two years po ang validity niya. And of course, here, naglagay lang ako ng alternate na email address ko. Aside from my official email address. Ayan, no? So, may serial number po yan siya. Okay? Next, so, ito po po yung iba niyang content, no? Meron, ito pa siya, ano yung mga, meron pa yung mga serial number, meron pa yung mga basic constraints. So, ayan, ayan, nandiyan lang mga mga details. Pero mas importante po yung sa kabila, ito siya. Kasi nandito yung mga personal details natin. Okay, so, right now, no, um, we will have a demonstration, no, how to check a digital certificate. No, so, ayan, no, uh, i-demo ko dito lang muna. So, sabi ito, in Firefox, no, anong gagawin? Open menu and go to options. Click privacy and security. Go to certificates and view certificates. In the certificate manager, view my certificates. So, uh, um, stop ko muna ito kasi gagawin natin yung, yung demo na yun, no? Um, uh, for a while, give me a few seconds. Open ko muna ang ano ko, Firefox. 
so if you have questions na pakiano lang muna yung questions niyo ha um pending lang muna tapusin muna natin ito ayan okay i hope nakikita niyo itong ano ko di ba so dito sa perfax no open ka sa menu tapos puta tayo sa options no so example ako kasi nag-apply na ako ng digital certificate and signature so nandito na siya sa akin so the same thing din sa iyo no bago ka pa da dapat mo siya i-install dito but as I said, don't worry kasi meron naman tayong videos on this. No, makikita naman natin yan. So, ayan. Punta after, di ba? First, open ng Firefox. Go to Options. Then, click Privacy and Security dito. Di ba? So, tingnan natin. Baba tayo. Puntahan natin yung Certificates. Ito siya, di ba? So, tingnan natin yung Certificates natin, no? So, ayan. So, nakikita dito, no? So, di ay taga DICT ako. Nandiyan yung Certificate ko. Makikita mo siya, no? Then, yung mga certificates ko, kasi dalawa siya. So, ganyan siya. But of course, right now, no, ang next na i-demo ko sa inyo, uh, oh, sorry, later na lang, no, yung about naman sa certificates natin, no? ba alam nyo ba later na pag mabigyan kayo ng certificate sa training na ito, na notice nyo later na digital design siya. Hindi, siya. hindi lang siya yung talagang certificate na certificate lang, no? Na, na nakascan lang yung signature. Okay? Sige, uh, tuloy muna ako. Don't worry, alam ba baka, baka may da iba yung pipirao, no? <laughs> Kung sa, sa ano pa na inaantok, I hope, uh, wag muna tayo matulog, ha? Don't worry, madali lang ito. Galaw-galaw lang muna. So, okay, may tanong dito, no? Where can I use a digital certificate? No, of course, a digital certificate can be used in online transactions, in documents, digital signatures, in office applications, and in software developed in-house. So, yan po ang gamit ng ating digital certificate. So, ano yung mga type na, uh, how, sorry, how long can I use? So, sabi ko kayo, di ba, two years yung validity niya. So, ano yung mga types of certificates na ini-issue natin? Of course, we have the authentication certificate. So, used in applications that require the user to log in. It can be used to encrypt email. Now, another one is yung signing certificate. Used to digitally sign documents. Yun ay papakita ko mamaya sa atin na i-demo ko. And of course, the SSL, no, a certificate for machines like web servers, application servers, routers, wireless fidelity devices, and others. No, although hindi pa to, hindi pa ito siya available. So ano bang ano bang before we continue? No, kasi I will be giving you mga yung mga terms no on the legal basis. Ano bang difference ng Republic Act and Executive Order? Okay, when we say Republic Act, this goes through the entire legislative process. It must be approved by both Senate and the House of Representatives and signed by the President. But when we say executive order or the EO, these are acts of the President providing for rules of a general or permanent character in implementation or execution of constitutional or statutory powers. Ayan. So ano bang legal basis ng e-signature? Diba? Kasi hindi lang ito talaga ito sa Pilipinas. Kahit sa ibang bansa, mayroon din sila mga ganito. Mga e-signatures, electronic signatures, or digital certain certificates. No? So of course, first is we have the Electronic Commerce Act of 2000 or the RA 8792. Sabi sa Section 7, Legal Recognition of Electronic Documents. Electronic documents shall have the legal effect validity or enforceability as any other document or legal writing. So for evidentiary purposes, an electronic document shall be the functional equivalent of a written document under existing laws. Diba? So talagang written document talaga siya. Another one, no, dito sa Section 8, we have the legal recognition of electronic signature. So, sabi na, it, it, will, it, will, it shall be equivalent to the signature of a person on a written document. Ayan na. So, equivalent talaga siya. Another one, sabi sa EO, Executive Order 810, Series of 2009, Section 4 states the application of digital signatures in e-government services. So, all government agencies, agencies and instrumentalities providing e-government services to its clients shall require the use of digital signatures in their respective e-government services. No, kaya, kahit sa amin no, ngayon, no, maraming nag-apply no, from SSS, no, from DSWD, no, DOLE, no, TESDA, no, maraming mga government agencies. Especially ngayon, ang COMELEC, no, marami by bulk yung dumating sa amin. Kasi talagang requ required din siya. So ito po yung structure ng uh, PNPKI. No? So we have the root certificate then and nandito tayo ni mga subscribers no in ano ko na lang ito siya 
So ayan, no, nandiyan tayo, no. So kasali tayo sa root, ayan. So ano ang mga Supreme Court rulings nito? So dito no, dito sa Supreme uh, Court ruling dito sa Rules of Electronic Evidence, no, yung AM number 01-701SC, sabi sa Rule 6, an electronic signature or digital signature authenticated in the manner prescribed here under is admissible in evidence as a functional equivalent of the signature of a person on a written document. So, ayan, no, kahit sa court, talagang in-honor na po ito siya. So, ito po siya yung traditional natin, di ba? Parang ako before, di ba? Sige, eh, uh, pahingin ng signature natin, i-scan natin, di ba? I-attach na lang natin, di ba? Parang ganon, yung mga e-signatures lang, no? But of course, ngayon, no, mas, mas social na. So, dati, di ba? Parang kahit, I'm sure ngayon, kasi pandemic ito ang ginagawa din natin, di ba? Nagagawa tayo ng document, Tapos ano ginagawa? Piniprint natin, di ba? Then, pinipirmahan. After pirmahan, ano ginagawa? Ini-scan na naman and then sinishare. So unfortunately, no, this is one, one step, then second step, a third step, fourth step, fifth step. So limang step siya. And actually, hindi, hindi mo na ma-authentic kasi you scanned it here, di ba? Gumawa ka ng document, let's say sa um, doc, uh, word processor, then print mo. Pinirmahan mo, then sige, pakiscan nga, tapos pakishare. So, ayan. So, yun, yun, yun yung traditional flow. But of course, ngayon, so ang ginawa ngayon, no, after mong gawin, isave mo lang yan as PDF file, portable document, then pwede mo na siyang ishare. No? Parang ngayon, di ba kayo nakita natin earlier yung certificate ni Sir no, from civil service, di ba? It was digitally signed by our cluster, uh, regional director. So, tingnan natin yung mga yan, no? So yun, ngayon is less paper na talaga siya. From the five processes, naging free na lang po yung process. Okay, so tingnan natin, ano ba yung mga financial benefits ng digital signing? Of course, it reduces cost of paper, ink, and printer. Kasi hindi mo na kailangan yung ginawa natin, di ba? After mong gawin sa laptop mo, or after mong ginawa ito, diretsyo mo na pirmahan, then pwede mo na i-share. So ayan, no? nakasave ka na rin. No? This was actually even before the pandemic. Especially sa pandemic ngayon, Mas madali talaga, no? we, we would just email the documents. Another one, it will reduce cost of manpower time in servicing forms, contracts, and applications, di ba? Kasi syempre, pag, eh, minsan nga, di ba, kailangan mo panghintayin, di ba, matagal pa, no? Yung, mag, yung sa pag, pag ano ng pagpapapirma, baka umalis pa yung tao, wala pa siya, di pa dumating, no? talagang matagal. Another one, the reduce cost of transportation, Handling, postage, career service, and traffic, and customs delay. No? Siyempre, kasi hindi na, hindi na ito transport. Email, email na lang, or sent electronically. Next is reduces cost of delays in signing, transmitting, approving, and processing. So, ayun na siya. And reduces cost of maintaining physical storage, digitization, and archiving, di ba? Especially sa panahon ngayon, titipid tayo, no, sa mga, kahit kami sa office, no, um, <laughs> konti lang yung mga papel namin dito. So, talagang mas maganda po ang digital version na siya. I mean, electronic form na siya. Reduces cost of fraud, encoding errors, tampering, modification of signed documents. Importante talaga siya, no? So, marireduce na po yung, yung mga fraudulent documents. And of course, last, reduces cost of loss of reputation, credibility, duty, security, leaks, and breaches. Ayan, no? So, before, of course, ang dami-daming papel. But ngayon, social na siya, no? Kasi electronic na lang siya. But of course, no, um, let me now give you a demonstration on the digital signing. So, ipakita ko muna pala sa inyo. For example, ito isang uh, purchase request, di ba? I'm sure, no, na-mention na siguro kayo na, di ba, si na Sir Jeric, no, si na Sir Gerald, they are in Cebu City, nasa Cebu sila. So, parang yun, nandun yung cluster office namin, no? parang regional office ng Region 7 and 8. So, for example, doon sa Cebu, for example, kasi I'm also a focal of the IC, uh, parang ICT Industry Development Bureau, focal ako ng, ng cluster namin. So, yung si, like, yung kaibigan ko doon, no, si Joshua, si Sir Joshua Domen, may pinadala siya sa akin na PR. Sabi niya, Ma'am Claire, pakisign naman nito. So, this was still last year. So, syempre, di ba, nung dati, di ba, pa GRS pa yan dito yung form, di ba, kasi sa Cebu sila, si papadala pa sa Tacloban, pipirmahan ko, papadala ulit sa Cebu, so talagang time consuming siya. But ngayon, hindi na. Especially nga, di ba, with the pandemic, mas madali na, especially kasi we are using the digital signing already. So, pinadala lang yung, pur yung purchase request, yung PR, 
through email, pwede nga, through Facebook lang. No, basta naka-PDF lang siya, then pagdating sa akin, pipirmahan ko lang siya, then ibabalik ko na sa kanya. No, I will show you a demo on this later, no, but na, ipakita ko lang mo na yung mga samples. Another one, ito din siya, no, yung, yung for example, no, si, yung kasama ko ito, si Sir Michael, di ba? Itong IIDB Resource Person Daily Time Record, no, ni Miss Cherry, ng Biliran, no, under kay Ma'am Marian. So, pag-verify pag, pag -verify yan ni Michael, through electronic signature na rin, no? Another one, like ito din, no, ang bigay ito ng, ng Manila, no, yung when nag-speaker ako doon for graphic design. So, this was digitally signed by Ma'am Malu. So, ayan. So, ngayon, ipapakita ko na sa inyo yung demonstration. So, I'll just uh, stop this one first. Oh, sorry. For a while, ha? I'll just open my, the files. And also, so, I'll also show you pala, ah, uh, demo on the batch signing, di ba? So, malaki talagang damit nito, especially, like, si director ngayon, pag mamimirma siya ng mga certificates nyo, hindi niya yan isa-isahin, no? By batch na po yan, pag perma niya. Okay, I'll just share now my screen. Ay, pakita ko sa inyo. Ang uh, window, ito siya. Yan. I hope nakikita nyo na yung screen ko, no? Nakikita na ba? Sorry. The, yung mga digital, yung digi-signer? Hindi po, ma'am. Hindi pa, sorry. For a while. Para naghang. <laughs> Sandali lang, ha. Para naghang man siya. Uh, give me a few seconds, ha. Ay, naghang man yung ano po. Dali, ha. Yes. Dali, ha. Naghang. Hmm. Bakit na ganito? Stop muna. Bakit na Um, hello. Uh, so I guess uh, Ma'am Claire is fixing her uh, presentation, but I would like to inform everyone that we will have a separate orientation about PNPKI, and uh, that will be posted sa aming FB page sa DICT. So check nyo rin po. Uh, that's going to be uh, soon. So... Uh, just check on our FB page na lang from time to time kasi we are going to post all of our activities in our FB page. Okay po? Ayan, so the presentation is up. Okay na po ba yan, Ma'am Claire? Ay, naka... Nakikita niya ba yung designer ko dito? Nakikita ba yung PR? Yes po, pero okay. medyo maliit. <laughs> ah, medyo maliit, sorry. Paano ba ito? Ah, sige, try ko palakihin. Sige po, ma'am. Ay, so, yan, klaro na? Naka 400%. Klaro na ba? Yeah. Yes yan. po. Okay. Thank you so much. So, sige, sorry ha. I don't know. Naghang siya sa kapipindot ko ng designer. So, anyway, um, palitin ko lang. Medyo mas, masyado malakis. Ayan. So, ito ang, this is an official document namin. This is our 
purchase request yung sabi ko kanina. So, ang nangyari dito, di ba? So, pinadala siya sa akin ng, ng office mate ko sa Cebu, and then, nag-attach ako ng signature ko dito. So, paano malalaman? Of course, di ba? As what I mentioned earlier, this is an official document na, of course, online siya, di ba? Ma-verify mo na siya online. Ibig sabihin, if you will print this out, syempre, hindi mo na ma-authenticate kung ako nga nag-perman yan kasi ipiprint mo na siya. So, dapat, verify mo siya online. So, how will, we, how will you do that? For this one, for example, no, we are using DigiSigner, but you can also use like yung Adobe, di ba, uh, Adobe Reader nyo. But kami, um, ako, I use DigiSigner to sign and of course to also authenticate documents. So for example, here na yung PR na ito, if i-click ko po yung pangalan ko dito, di ba, na-notice mo, no, nag nagkaroon siya yung ano, parang pwede ako mag-mouse mag over. So nandiyan, nakalagay siya na signature is valid, signed by... Fernandez Clare, di ba? Ayan. So, yung signed by Fernandez Clare, then date, kung kailan ko siya pinirmahan. So, ayan. So, uh, 2021, 0927. Pati po yung time. Of course, no, nakita nyo na yung kay director kanina, yung kay director Amores, di ba, yung kay certificate ni Sir Mark, ni Sir Don, ano siya, hindi na nilagyan ng ito yung mga dito. Kasi syempre, pangit naman tingnan. Digitally signed by, di ba? Signature lang. But ako, syempre, for some documents, gusto ko, ganyan din. So, meron pong option, no, na gusto mo nandiyan yung details or gusto mo yung signature mo lang. So, yan po siya, no. So, just uh, open, uh, let's say, ako, DigiSigner, then, i-click mo lang yan, malalaman mo na if authenticate siya or hindi. Okay, so, let me show you another sample. Yan, ito siya, yung bigay sa akin ng central office, no, in one of our recent trainings. Ayan. So, dito naman, si Ma'am Malu naman, kay Ma'am Malu naman ito signature. So, ganun pa rin, double-click ko lang siya or click-click ko lang siya once. Nakalagay, signed by Akilizan Maria Lourdes. Ayan, kay Ma'am Malu. Tapos, kailan niya pinirmahan? No? So, ayan, nakalagay noong uh, October 10, uh, 2020, last year siya. So, nandiyan po yung signature niya. And another one, ito naman, no, yung kay Michael. No? So, syempre, di ba, marami kasi kami or... Most, marami sa amin, no, may mga ano na, na gumagamit na ng digital signatures. Ito naman kay George. Yun, nandito si George. So, ayan, makikita natin. So, Picardal, George, Michael, ho, kaya ang kotas, kailan niya pinirmahan niya? So, January 13, 2021. So, that's how we uh, we validate or we look into these digital signatures. Ibig sabihin po, pag once magpirma pa ako dito, malalang sabi na, ay, this document has been altered already. So, ganun po ang lalabas. So, I hope na nakita natin no, yung mga iba-ibang klase na digital certificates or digital signatures natin. So, I'll just uh, continue here with my presentation. Okay. So, nakikita nyo ba yung ano, uh, presentation ko, Sir Jeric? Yes, ma'am. Ayan. Thank yes, you so much. Okay. So, sige na, patapos na tayo ha. Huwag kayong mag-alala. No? So, we have an advisory on the use of electronic means for of prescription for drugs. O, di ba? Kahit, di ba, especially nung nag-start nag yung pandemic, if not, this is March 18, 2020, di ba? The start of the use of pandemic natin, di ba? So, even yung FDA, no? Uh, basahin ko na lang. So, sabi dito, in relation to the Food and Drug Administration Circular 2020-007, Pertaining to the guidelines and the implementation of the use of electronic means of prescription for drugs for the benefit of individuals vulnerable to COVID-19, the DICT conveys to all doctors and health professionals in the country that the agency is open to receive applications for digital signatures. Diba? Yung reseta, digitally signed na siya. Para pag example, ikaw, pag punta mo doon sa butika, na kahit hindi na ikaw... Yung doktor, hindi na kailangan na, di ba, ngayon, hindi na kasi uso yung face-to-face, -face, di ba? Doctors, usually, ano na rin, virtual na rin yung pagpapakonsulta natin sa kanila. The same thing with this one, no, yung mga reseta natin. Di ba, syempre, baka si doc, busy pa, or may, may ginagawa, or nasa ibang lugar, no, or hindi kasi ganun kadali makipag-set ng appointment, di ba? So, yung doctors, and of course, yung mga doctors natin, no, and health professionals, no, they were encouraged, no, to apply and use digital signatures. Ayan. And of, of, of course, ito naman ay, Binavalidate naman. And of course, tinatanggap din ng ibang butika. Then another one, we also have the DICT offers digital certificates to prosecutors for e-inquest. Diba? Kahit sa DOJ, no, ginamit na rin nila ito. So, this is in response to DOJ's issuance of general rules and procedures for the conduct of electronic and online inquest proceeding or the e-inquest in the National Capital Region during the whole duration of the public health emergencies. Ayan. Dahil nga sa COVID, ganito talaga ang nangyari ngayon. No? Mas ano talaga pag ano na lang siya, electronically signed. Kasi valid document na din talaga siya. 
So, ayan siya, di ba? Inquest may be done online, sabi ng DOJ. That was also last year, no? So, paano yung e-inquests are done, di ba? So, sabi dito, e-inquests will require coordination among different agencies. So, ano ko lang itong nasa, ano natin, no? nasa red box. Sabi dito, the inquest prosecutor will use electronic or scanned signature. Submissions and approvals of the inquest resolution will be done online. So, ayan. Post na po yan siya online. So, before COVID, nang ginagawa namin, di ba, you have to come to our office, mag-i-pag-meeting ka pa sa amin kasi titignan namin kung ikaw ba talaga yan. Di ba, syempre, ano, this is also an official document din siya no, sa Philippine government. So, kaya nga kami as registration officers, kami, no, marami kami dito sa Region 8, titignan talaga namin before, no, before COVID. But of course, ngayon, no, um, sabi ko, how can I have a digital signature, no, a certificate? So ayan, no, ito yung circular namin dati, no, for external clients, no. So hindi na po siya, hindi na kailangan ang face to face, virtual na lang po yung pag pag ano namin sa inyo para pag-verify. Ayun. So ito po, no, this was also last year, the city provides secure digital certificates to the public. So, ayan, no. Pwede na po kayo mag-file even kayo ngayon, no, you can file online, no. So ayan siya. So paano if you want to know more about the PNPKI project? Just visit the HTTPS column double slash the city that got the slash PNPKI. So, ayan, nakikita nyo natin dito. And of course, punta lang po kayo sa individual certificate if kayo po, if you will apply, no, um, as an individual. So, meron po dyan form, application form, just click it, download mo yan, then, ano siya, fillable siya. Ibig sabihin, pwede mo siyang i-fill in, no, kahit PDF file. Then, masasave mo siya, ipadala nyo lang sa amin. And of course, no, Yung appearance, ano na siya, virtual appearance na lang. Magpapaskadyol lang kayo sa amin. Um, lahat po, no, ng, sa DICT, paskadyol lang kayo. Then, ayun na, no, mag, 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 ano tayo, mag-online call na lang uh, via, kami nga, Google Meet lang, no, just to verify na ikaw talaga yan. And of course, may mga requirement tayo, no. Number three, ito, yung birth, birth certificate or valid Philippine passport. And of course, um, ito yung photo, is, sa inyo na rin, no, ilagay nyo rin doon sa form nyo taken within the last six months, and UMID card, no, or ano yung mga ibang, kung wala kayong UMID card, pwede rin ibang ID, passport, yung office ID nyo, driver's license, PRC ID, NBI clearance, police clearance, postal ID, uh, GSISE card, no, SSS card, senior citizens card, o ID, so marami pa, no, just uh, check it out, no, doon sa ano natin sa web, website natin. And of course, no, to know more, nandito, man, nandito pa din, min, sorry, nandito din naman yung sa YouTube natin. No? You, pwede nyo rin siya ma-check. Okay? So, ayan siya. And of course, ito yung itsura po ng form. So, ayan, pwede mo siyang ma-fill in. Lagyan-lagyan mo lang dyan. Of course, yung naka-red box, required po yan siya. Okay? So, but of course, kayo, di ba, yung mga nasa Visayas Cluster 2, no, if you are from Leyte, sino ba mga taga-Leyte dito? Mga taga-Summer, Eastern Summer, Northern Summer, Biliran, Leyte, Southern Leyte, and, ah, sorry, hindi ko na ilagay dito, no, kasi sampu yan. So, from Region 8 and from Region 7, if you are from Cebu, from Bohol, from Negros, no, Dumaguete, pwede po isend nyo diretso sa aming cluster, sa Visayas Cluster 2. So, ito po yung address natin, uh, bc2.support that pnpki at dict.gov.ph but of course is nakita ko marami tayong taga ibang provinces um pag ano naman sa national level pwede niyo lang ibigay doon sa info.pnpki at dict.gov.ph and sila na po magra-route doon sa cluster na yon no? pero pag if you know the dict sa lugar niyo you try to contact them and tell them sir ma'am saan tayo pwedeng mag-submit ng application so ayan but of course as i said earlier pag sa bc to kayo meaning itong 7 plus yung tatlo pa sorry i forgot to place here yung tatlo yun pwede na sa diretso na sa amin kasi kami mag kami mag-receive ng applications niyo so as i said check out na lang yung mga youtube videos natin so ano ba yung mga benefits ng pki ayan so PKI, it will vastly improve verifiable identification of an individual or entity. So, ayan, di ba? Passwords are often, if not exclusively used, to authorize access to computer systems and applications. So, ayan. A digital certificate issued by the PKI will have a minimum of 2,048-bit system generated key to further ensure user identity. So, ayan, no? It will vastly in, uh, verify your identification natin. Of course, this will also imbue on the data sufficient integrity for acceptance as evidence in the court of law. O di ba? Sa Philippines, United States, Canada, Korea, Singapore, Malaysia, 
They already have laws which provide the legal framework for formally, formally recognizing digitally signed data as proper evidence for courts. Ayan. Ganun din po dito sa Pilipinas, di ba? It allows a document in digital form to be signed as if it were a paper document. Of course, no, and... Oh, sorry. It also provides significant protection against unauthorized access of common communications. Diba? The government already relies on ICT and this is increasing. ICT, however, cannot be secured by traditional methods because of their very nature. Encryption methods being used are not regulated. So what are you waiting for? Diba? In this pandemic, working from home is the new normal. So digital certificate assures continuity of business operations and prompt processing of documents online without compromising health and safety. So, ayan. So, thank you so much. Back to you, Sir Jerry. All right. Thank you so much, Ma'am Claire. And, uh, yes, obviously, uh, na, na ipakita po talaga natin yung purpose ng PNPKI no, in that, in that certain uh, topic. Anyways, uh, Meron pa po tayong next na speaker. <laughs> but uh, I would just like to acknowledge pala uh, Sir Jun Ventanilla Jr. is uh, in charge of C3, D2, in charge po siya ng certification ng ICT proficiency natin. So he will be staying with us for the Q&A later on. Alright, so without further ado, let's proceed with our next speaker, our last speaker uh, for today. Uh, we'll be introducing tech for ed Sir Chadi. Hello, uh, thank you, thank you, Sir Jerick. Hello. Okay, I will be presenting my slides. Uh, can you see my screen, uh, Sir Jerick? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Definitely. <laughs> so, hello, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, I will explain to you briefly what is Tech for Ed. Uh, I will not take too much uh, much much of your time, so um, I will start. So, Tech for Ed is the technology empowerment for education, employment, entrepreneurship, and economic development, and this project aims to bridge the digital divide by improving access to ICT and digital opportunities for underserved areas in the country and vulnerable sectors. So yung uh, services po ng TechFred centers po is uh, access to TechFred platform, which I will be explaining to you later, access to computers, uh, the internet and other ICT services, access to eGov services available on the platform, you can process like uh, online applications such as birth certificate, passport applications, and be clearance appointments, etc. And then access to digital literacy trainings in order to introduce and improve ICT skills of its users. So uh, regarding to the tech for ed platform, all we have to do is access the tech4ed.gov.ph uh, website. So once you... Um, Access the website, po, uh, we will register, and then once we have reg registered, we will immediately be redirected to, to the tech for ed page. So the tech for ed the platform has eight segments, which is um, rural impact sourcing, e-health, uh, gender and development, e-assist, e-marketplace, e-edu skills, e-agriculture, and e-gov services. So yung Let's start po naman sa one of the segments such as e-agri. Uh, the e-agri segment aims to use ICT to enhance and localize farm technologies for increased productivity and reduced cost for farmers and fisher folks. So yung mga gusto maging uh, plantitos and plantitas ngayong, uh, ngayon, uh, new times, this will be the perfect segment to help you. So, uh, also, uh, the eAgri provides technical advisory services on agriculture and fisheries technologies. Users of this content can take up online agriculture-related courses through uh, its e-learning section and earn certificates. Uh, Siyempre, libre lang po yung pagkuha ng certificates. 
And then pagkuha ng mga courses. So next po uh, on the segment is the e-health. The e-health segment provides access to basic health information and access to available and existing Philippine-based health-related online resource, including international and global healthcare organizations. So example, uh, isang part ng e-health po is yung uh, DOH Academy e-learning platform. So um, yung DOH Academy's e-learning uh, portal po is the first of its kind in the Philippines to streamline and standardize core training content for health workers into online learning modules uh, centralized in one location. So it offers uh, online courses for COVID-19 and other health concerns in its academy. Uh, the Learning Center not only for healthcare workers but also intended to inform the general public on facts regarding COVID and health concerns. Yun. Ito po yung mga uh, pag-enroll nyo po sa, uh, sa courses, you can also learn um, CPD units. So all you have to do is visit the uh, tech for ed platform. Um, so another one sa e-health uh, e po is the e-learning program uh, is a global initiative that aims to improve access to to quality mental health and social services and promote the rights of people with mental health conditions, uh, psychosocial and intellectual, intellectual and cognitive dis disabilities. So ito yung most common na segment na ginagamit actually sa TechFred platform, yung e -edu skills. So madami yung mga students natin yung gustong matuto yung nag-access dito. Kasi yung e -edu skills uh, aims to de deliver e-learning demand to address the education divide. So, um, example content po sa e uh, edu skills is the digitallearn.org. So, it is uh, uh, free health, a free online hub for digital literacy support and training provided by the Institute of Museum and Library Services of the United States. Uh, the site builds upon the fo and fosters the work of libraries and community organizations work towards teaching digital literacy. If you want to learn, uh, if you want to be uh, digital literate, uh, this is the, the place you should visit. So, the next is uh, the Learning English Application for Pinoy's. So in partnership with uh, the UP Diliman and uh, Department of Science and Technology, it aims to uh, enhance one's skills in English grammar, vocabulary, and speech to have a higher chance of employment in a DPO agencies or just wanting to in uh, increase your English proficiency skills. And next is the ALS Curriculum Reflex the set of knowledge, skills, and competencies that learners, learners should develop to meet the minimum requirements of basic education. It is comparable to the formal school curriculum, the teaching and the learning process, and resources are based on the ALS curriculum. So yung ibang mga students, eh, kasi, uh, uh, if they wanted to learn uh, even more, they usually visit the, tech, uh, the EDU skills uh, segment because there are more uh, stuff to be offered in this segment and like uh, this Technoclatan uh, contains um, electronic resources subscribed and downloaded by the National Library of the Philippines. So uh, this Technoclatan internet connection is nina po siya kailangan uh, to browse the materials, the Technoclatan program will uh, revolutionize the mo more than uh, a thousand public libraries affili affiliated with the NLP. So, we have a children's book, um, the Let's Read Children's Book. Uh, the children's book uh, has character themes and settings that will reflect and affirm their lives and provide opportunities to explore the world. Let's read draws the 
drafts on the Asia Foundations, 18 offices in the region and deep ties in the local communities to build unprecedented, unprecedented digital library of local language children's books. Ito po, uh, yung future ready essay. Yan, uh, if you want something more advanced, um, advanced courses uh, with like with young and dynamic population, rapid economic integration and urbanization, the demand for a skilled and digital ready workforce is high in the ASEAN region. So the future ready ASEAN uh, content is an online platform that aims to train students, educators, and underserved youth age 15 to 35 on digital skills. In particular, computer science uh, education to enable them to thrive in the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, so you must students who are invited to pursue additional online courses leading to Microsoft industry recognized certifications. So yung, uh, this time around kasi, um, most uh, in this generation, you you ha actually have to be uh, digital literate. Kasi yung iba, most like most natin makilala yung nagtatrabaho na online, di ba? So all they need is some basic uh, computer skills. So uh, feature at SAN is actually a big uh, a, a big website so all you have to do is visit them and see their courses so next is the global community foundation ito uh, similar to sa uh, future radio sayan so this contains a uh, self self-paced uh, tutorials for free from seniors learning computer basics to seasoned professional brushing up on Microsoft Office. Two unemployed individuals gaining career skills to students practicing math. So everyone can find something useful at the Global Community Foundation. So Madame is course actually like I want to get started with computers, learn Microsoft Office, internet skills, skills for today, kite um Photoshop uh, Photoshop courses meron din dito eh especially in here in creativity and design like graphic design create creativity photography image editing photoshop so meron and work and career meron po siya job search and networking so next is the test hero in test hero po it is an application or a platform that will help students prepare for admission exams and certification exams so it contains various modules, tips, videos, and other content that will help learners measure their abilities and monitor their progress. So, yung mga may mga upcoming na exams po, uh, they can oh, they can review here naman po in Test Hero, uh, mga upcoming major exams, major or minor. They can um, review here in Test Hero kasi updated po yung mga curriculum sa Test Heroes. Like uh, coverage, anytime, any place, comprehensive, validity, and reliability. So, lot ng content po is made by experienced teachers and subject matter experts. So, the content was statistically validated by private and public schools and is equivalent to the best standardized test. So, here are some uh, courses put sa test hero like. Uh, math, ALS reviewers, English grammar and vocabulary, reading comprehension, math, and science. Next po is the, the, the gender and development. So provides content on women empowerment, policies for protection of women, and skills enhancement. So under uh, gender development, meron po tayong connected women. So Connected Women is a job matching platform for co that connects busy professionals from abroad to Filipino virtual assistants. It is also a social enterprise that conducts digital skills training to bring women's business ideas to life. So Connected Women is basically a startup to introduce women to digital marketing. Diba ganda niya, no? So next is... Um, the Women ICT Frontier Initiative or Wi-Fi. So these training modules will 
that will equip women uh, with in entrepreneurship and ICT skills. Next so segment po natin is yung e marketplace. Yung e marketplace po is like we it's uh basically similar to your Lazada, Shopee, Zalora. So it provides market reach beyond the entrepreneur's community for exponential economic growth and opportunities. So yung e-marketplace po is local po natin, local marketplace po natin, local online marketplace. Po. So the next is the e-assist. So the e-assist focuses on providing learning and continuous skills development opportunities for digital inclusion for special sectors. Yung mga gustong mag-ipon, mag, gustong mag -ipon, like this, uh, the financial literacy. So in partnership po with the Coleco Foundation, the Back for Good uh, course, and Gusubang Yimaman course, and sa financial football, and isang um, and another partnership with the Commission of Filipino Overseas for Peso Sense, which includes uh, videos, games, and printed materials, which aim to increase one knowledge about financial management. So yung mga gustong mag-ipon, <laughs> mga gustong mag-ipon ng mga malalaki, this is the place to be. So ito po yung isang bagong uh, segment po natin is the Google Digital Garage. Bagong bagong seg, uh, bagong content po siya sa e-assist. So the Google Digital Garage offers a range of free digital courses for small business owners, job seekers and people looking to learn something new whether it's starting your own business or getting an introduction to coding. So um this Google Digital Garage po madami pong nag-access din every day. Hindi lang po uh, Filipino people, but uh, international po siya. And uh, the ICT for entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, in partnership with Go Negocio, it contains videos of successful entrepreneurs to inspire and encourage people to take risk in venturing in a business. So meron po tayong dalawang courses available ngayon. And next is um, the ICT literacy. So uh, in partnership with Intel and Tinder Foundation, it provides assistance to people who wants to be digitally literate, such as uh, use of uh, the basic parts of a computer, uh, anywhere on the basics about computers. Uh, and it, it also can be accessed in um future ready asean so here in um this component provides various e-learning resources that can help in developing skills and knowledge to specific courses so ito yung mga google online courses po while uh intel online training helps teachers to level up their teaching strategies using icts in the classroom approach so next po is the career engine. So itong, itong career engine po, this is good uh, for our graduating students kasi career engine is one is the one-stop hub to help uh, graduating students or fresh graduates from colleges and technical vocational uh, become workforce ready. So students will be equipped with the mandatory soft skills and elective employability skills to empower them with the expertise to apply for the future jobs and become globally competent. So ultimately, Career Engine will support the students to excel in their careers via uh, experimental learning portal that will help them gain real-time work experience through the internship programs outlined by our partner organizations looking for young talent. So in short, po, if you apply for a uh, career engine po, there will be uh, chances that the comp that the that the partner companies will grant you a inter internship or you might 
just get the job immediately depending on your performance or your skills uh, in applying for career engine so um this is one of the last segment in our uh, tech for Ed platform the egov services so yung egov services po natin is the link to the national government portal so it is an ag aggregation of various content and services from other government agencies, making the Tech for Ed platform a one-stop shop for selected government services. So, um, uh, so basically, government services on a click of an icon. So lahat po nakalagay na po sa jan, na compressed po siya in one site. So, uh. Madami po siyang maxes dyan, like uh, regarding uh, COVID-19, business and trade, certificates and IDs, contributions, education, employment, housing, and passport, and travel. So yung most requested naman po sa e-gov service natin is to the USDJSPS. So uh, apply online insurance for special recruitment, submit your company general information sheet, apply for local employment, and even apply for an SSS number. So, madami po yung uh, pwedeng magawa natin sa e-edu skill, ay uh, e-gov services. Ay, meron pa palang isa. Ano ba yan? So, uh, meron, ito po ang rural impact sourcing. Uh, yung rural impact sourcing po is a segment that contains a uh, Content that aim to promote ICT-enabled jobs with high economic activity. It is a targeted uh, at users in rural communities to help them gain employment through the online freelancing industry. So you know, work online, home-based uh, freelancing. You must sa mga gusto mag uh, work online. We can uh, go to this. So uh, itong social media marketing bootcamp po which is a series of online lessons that aims to help entrepreneurs take their business online and for freelancers to beef, beef up their skills on e-commerce and digital marketing. So freelancer bootcamp naman po, which contains a link to a free learning program that teaches the basics of freelancing. Lata po yan, basics, eh, not just basics po, meron din tayong mga semi-advanced uh, learning programs sa freelancer bootcamp. And the freelancer client management guide from the word from the word itself, how to manage your clients, which directs users to a video link on a mentoring program on e-commerce and digital marketing for uh, MSMEs and freelancers. So um, actually, we already have a lot of tech for centers uh, nationwide. We already have four thousand four hundred um, in the year twenty twenty. So Hindi pa, hindi, hindi pa namin na total yung this year, uh, maybe by December. So, uh, usually yung mga centers po natin is uh, nasa libraries po, uh, under sa municipals, municipal libraries, municipal, or mostly sa mga schools po na mga high school and elementary schools. So, madami po yung tech for centers na established po natin. So I guess that is all for my uh, presentation. I just made it brief because uh, we have a tight uh, timeline. Uh, lang po. So thank you, Sir Jarek. Back to you. All right. Thank you so much, Sir Chadi. You know, and actually, I'm one also uh, part of the Tech for Ed uh, coordinator. So, kung sino po dyan from Region 8 na hindi pa po naka-avail, who haven't availed yet with our Tech for Ed Center, uh, that's gonna be for free, no? And of course, you just have to contact Sir Chadi, Ms. Hazel, Ma Marian. So, ayan, sa mga schools po, uh, there are a lot of things we can learn uh, from the platform of Tech for Ed. Ayan. So, thank you so much, Sir Chadi. So, now, it's time for us to proceed with our Q&A forum. Ayan. So I would like to request our uh, speakers, no, Sir Gerald, Sir Don, uh, Ma'am Claire, and Sir Chadi, if we do have further questions from our joiners today, okay? 
So let me check on the chat box if they do have some questions so we would be able to um, answer their queries, okay? Okay, so I guess I have one question uh, that it, this one goes to Sir Gerald. Uh, this is coming from Nasty Jim uh, Gordo. So it says here, um, what level of CS eligibility po yung uh, na-discuss kanina regarding the ICT proficiency exam? <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you for that, Sir Zarek, and thank you for the question. Uh, um, based, for, based on the qualification for the, the level, uh, we all... Sir Don Mark. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, present. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, under our rules, so no, it, it did not. It did not uh, indicate whether it is a first level eligibility or a second level eligibility. What it uh, said here is what it says here is that the appropriateness of this eligibility is only for positions for which the eligibility was given uh, meaning to say if uh, you let's say for example you have been uh, you have been issued a uh, an eligibility uh, for uh, systems analysis and design so if there is a position uh, which is allied to that particular position then that will be the uh, the level of eligibility that will be that, that will be given to you uh, considering that this is a special eligibility you know, we will uh, have to uh, go to a memorandum circular uh, number 13 series of 2010 uh, 2013 mc10 series of 2013 it indicates there in uh, the uh, the positions uh, to which this uh, particular uh, proficiency is uh, given. Now, um, as to the appropriateness, and I, I personally I could not determine if it is a first level uh, or a second level eligibility. What the uh, what the uh, 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 rule states is that it is only appropriate to positions for which the eligibility was given meaning 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 uh if you you cannot use this eligibility if you're vying for a, an administrative officer position okay okay so unless the administrative position has a uh, specific designation which states that uh, uh for a con for an IT or foreign information technology uh, uh, position. Let's say, for example, ano, pwede kasing may administrative officer, pero yung nakalagay sa position niya is uh, data encoder controller, which is a more higher uh, position. Oh. Pero you, you cannot use this parang generic siya na uh, ah, second level to position. So, pwede akong mag-apply ng ibang position, which is equivalent to a second level position. Hindi ho pwede. Uh, ang sinasabi ho ng, ng, ano, ng rules, appropriate lang siya para sa skills eligibility na ina-applyan na position. And those that are listed in this particular uh, uh, proficiency tests mentioned earlier. Okay. Yes, precisely. All right. 
correct, correct. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ma'am Randy. All right. So thank you so much, uh, Ms. Rudina. So uh, Ma'am Rudina is also with us. And so uh, Sir June Ventanilla, uh, who's going to help out to answer some queries or questions regarding ICT proficiency exam. So we have another question. This is related to um, ICT proficiency exam. Coming from Madeline uh, Bokto. Uh, sabi niya, could it be possible for us to secure uh, review materials from your office relating to ICT proficiency exam? So, uh, yan po yung tanong, kung meron po ba tayong review materials from our office relating to ICT proficiency exam? Ay, magandang hapon. Natawa naman ako doon. <laughs> Bigla ako na pasama sa, sa event na to. Okay, magandang hapon po. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, nga. okay, magandang hapon kay Sir Dan from CSC uh, and sa ating kulig from uh, BC2, uh, si Jeric, Gerald, Gina, and uh, si Mama Rian and uh, Claire. Salamat ha. Okay. Kasi napadaan lang ako. Nakita ko yung presentation. And, uh, actually, nakita ko yung presentation ni Sir Gerald. Nag-react lang ako na kasi parang duma. <laughs> parang duma lang. Uh, magbibigay mo na ako ng ibang, ano ah, uh, kumbaga, share lang ako ng ibang info. Um, tama yung sinabi ni, ni Sir uh, Don from CSE na... Ang pinagmulan po talaga ng proficiency na to is yung Presidential Decree Number 1408 sa so panahon pa po ni President Marcos kaya Presidential Decree. And uh, naging part ako ng committee, actually may kasama pa siyang computer operation kasi yung hawak namin noon is uh, mainframe pa. Okay. So, uh, ko lang din yung attention ni Sir Don uh, kasi nakita ko yung presentation niya. ICTO pa yung office natin. So, DICT na po. DICT na po. Yun lang. And, dun naman sa presentation ni Sir Gerald, eh, ang nakita ko kasi is uh, CSCM. Okay, hindi na po CSCM, but uh, C3D2 na po yung division. And, ang binanggit niya rin si NCM, which is now the ILCDB, or the ICT Literacy uh, Development Bureau. Okay, and nakalagay din po dun sa, ano, sa presentation ni Sir Gerald that uh, the part 1 passing is first 20 at 25. So hindi na po 25 but it is 20. That's the raw score. Raw score po yan ha. And for the part 2, ang nakalagay po dun sa presentation ni 75, uh, yung bago po is 80. Okay, yan po. Now, uh, Dun, yung, yung score po ninyo, yung raw score ninyo sa part 1 and yung, uh, yung score ninyo sa part 2, i-merge po yun to come up with a uh, grade na 80% na yun yung passing rate natin. Okay? So, hindi po mababali wala yung score ninyo sa part 1 dun sa written. Kasama po yan dun sa passing uh, rate natin. And with regards naman po dun sa, ano, sa requirements and kung sino po yung mga qualified na kumuha ng exam, actually po yung proficiency exam natin is uh, designed for uh, uh, graduating students ng undergrad is ICT related or engineering. Even dun po sa mga graduates na. Okay, yun lang po talaga yung target natin. To uh, eliminate po yung mataas na mortality ng ng ano ng ng fail ng ano nag nag fail so uh, over time uh, nag nag create naman po tayo ng policy na pwede naman din po natin i-admit yung mga undergrads na non ICT related or engineering provided that uh there pong certification from their uh, head ng ng agency or ng office nila na yung uh, line of work nila is ICT related. 
or uh, yung meron po silang nakuhang uh, at least 40 hours na ICT training. Now aside from that, if talagang wala doon, tinang din po natin yung at TOR nila, baka may mga subjects, like po yung accounting. Accounting po, meron silang subject na uh, ICT related. Eh. So, pwede po natin i-count yun. Okay. So, hindi na po talaga tayo specific na dun sa uh, ICT related or engineering lang. So, in-open na po natin. Yun, yun lang po yung aking, ano, uh, Mrs. Ye. Uh, marami pong salamat sa inyong lahat at uh, <laughs> sa, sa team ng BC to na Ako yung inyong napagbigyan ng pagkakataon para may share ko naman yung, uh, yung, yung nalalaman natin sa certification. Now, uh, na nalimutan ko yata yung tanong. Pwede bang ulitin? <laughs> the, the question, sir, is ano, meron po ba tayong mga uh, review materials po from our office na okay. re related po sa ICT proficiency okay. exam? With regards to review materials, wala po talaga. Kasi, uh, generi, ano po eh, malawak po yung usapin pagdating sa ICT. But then, given na po, na present naman din po yung ano, yung mga uh, subject uh, matters na na dapat i-review. Yung scope ng mga exam, i-review ng mga exam list, like yung system development life cycle, the networking, the database management, Okay, yung yung uh, basic programming, the con constructs. Okay. So, dun lang po nag evolve talaga yung ating uh, exam. Okay. So, wala, wala po talaga eh. Wala. Wala mm. ano. Kasi, right. like, like uh, may, tulad yan, may mga bagong technologies na pwede rin pong pagkuna ng, ng, ano, ng questions for the exam. Yun po. Okay. Maraming salamat. Uh, maraming salamat po, Sir Chun. Yes, hi Dina. Maraming salamat. Uh, hi Dina. Uh, hi Dina. If I may share, if I, if I may, I don't know. Nabanggit din ni, ni Sir Don from Civil Service na there are two uh, ways how to get the certification. One is uh, through a course, programming course being offered by uh, the ICT through ILCDB or by taking the exam directly. Yun yung ano, uh, uh, ways na para makakuha ka ng certification. One is to attend the course, one is to take the exam. And hindi po, yun pong accredited lang po, yun lang po accredited ng civil service, like the C language, the C, C++, C Sharp, uh, BB.net, BB version 6, and the Java. Yun lang po accredited. Uh, 
Um, opo, meron na po yun. Meron na po. Uh, right now, we are working naman. Meron naman po kaming plan to include yung Python. Uh, ba kasi baka gusto marinig naman. Opo. Uh, we, are, we have plans. Uh, kaya lang medyo maraming documents ang ayusin doon eh. Para i-submit sa civil service. So again, may plans. May plans to include. Yes po. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ma'am Dina and Ma'am uh, Sir, Sir June. So another question. Uh, most uh, most po sa mga questions dito na nai-raise po is about uh, yung schedule ng exam. Meron po bang current mga na schedule particularly sa yung may nag, isang nagtanong from Bohol or from other provinces kung meron po ba tayong schedule ng exam. Kung saan po nila makikita yung post natin regarding that. All right, thank you so much for answering that question, Ma'am Dina. All right, so uh, uh, by the way, for those uh, outside from Region 7, uh, just check po sa FB page po ng DICT, ng ibang clusters, kasi for sure they will definitely uh, post it there, okay? And uh, next question, uh, medyo extend na po tayo ng konti ng oras, but anyway, we'll accommodate last, accommodate last two questions na lang, okay? So... One question here, paano, uh, coming from Francis Rivas, paano kung nag-fail sa pag-take ng exam para sa renewal ng certificate? May, possible po ba, may possibility po bang matanggal sa posisyon ng ICT employee? What if nag-fail daw po sa pag-retake ng exam?
And then po sa chat box natin. No, uh, yeah. The, the, the proficiency is one time. Wala pong renewal yon. Lifetime na po ninyong hawak yung pag, pag eligible na po kayo sa uh, computer programming. And, uh, opo, <laughs> you can you can take the exam if you fail, pero wag na, hindi naman po drastic na tatanggalin ka sa position kapag nag-fail ka, hindi naman po ganun. You, you can still take the exam. And yung eligibility in computer programming is lifetime na po yan. But as mentioned by by uh, uh, Sir Don of Civil Service, uh, dapat within three years na, na nung pumasa ka, may file mo kaagad. Otherwise, yun ang ano, maglalaps yung ano, uh, eligibility mo. Yes, dapat, yung, dapat siya mag-retake pag naglaps na. Pero napakatagal naman po ng three years <laughs> bago di, para di ka mag-file. Thank you po, thank you. Hanson na lang po, Hanson na lang po. Apo. Ayun, clear naman po yung sagot ni Sir Jun. So, definitely, thank you so much for your help, Sir Jun, for answering uh, these questions. Ayun, so last question na po tayo, uh, mga joiners, no? So, this one goes to uh, Ma'am Claire. And this one also is coming from Sir Jun. <laughs> Ma'am Claire, paano... Uh, Asa na ba yun question? Ma'am Claire, paano ang batch shining? May minimum or maximum number of docs po ba? Yan po yung question. Uh, I'm really sorry. Okay. Hindi ko pala na, ano, hindi ko pala na demo no kanina. Sabi nga pala. Um, actually, basically, no, sa, based on this, hindi ko pa na-check kung ilan talaga yung maximum. But sa batch signing, I think for us, ako up to 800, parang okay pa siya. Pero yung mga usually yun, 300 to 800, parang okay lang siya isang batch sign. But up Ma more Claire, than a yes. Ano pong gamit mo? Yung DigiSigner po, sir. DigiSigner? Ah, okay. Downloadable yan, ma'am. Pasensya ka na kasi bigla okay. rin akong, ano, hindi ko alam, hindi ko alam. Oh, pwede, ko pong, pwede ko pala siya i-demo. No, okay lang ba? I have, ano lang naman, one minute siguro. Okay lang ba i-demo ko muna? yung paggamit ng DigiSign, yung batch signature, no? Okay lang? Go ahead, ma'am. Sige, share ko yung screen ko. Sorry, hindi ko pala naibigay kayo na, no? Sorry, alam mo na, mga, ano tayo, medyo, medyo tumatanda na, sorry. Nakalimutan ko kay Demo. So, nandito po siya, na yung kanina. So, ito po siya yung batch signing, but, ano lang, 8 lang yung nilagay ko. So, basically, itong certificate na 8, ayun, nakikita niyo siya, ano na siya, copy-paste, copy-paste ko lang siya. So example, no, assuming ito yung certificate, di ba? So certificate of completion, example, nandyan yung firma ko. So I will now sign it, di ba? So I'll just click yung sito, sign document. Um, I'll just uh, put there my signature kasi sa akin medyo malaki siya. So um, uh, sa DigiSigner kasi, na ano ko na po kasi siya, parang naset ko na siya. So kung first time nyo pa, dapat is mag-ano din kayo na scan signature nyo, iset nyo din doon. So in my case, nandiyan na siya. So ang, when you sign pala, hindi ko na demo kayo na thank you no, for that for that question din. If I will click sign, hihingi po siya sa akin ng password. Diba? Ito po siya yung parang tatang ito na private key ko. So ayan. So pag ano ko yan po siya, example, no? So, ay, ay sorry. Pag i-okay ko yan siya. Ay sorry, hindi ba yan? Sandali ha. Ano bang nangyari dito? Sandali ha. Ano nangyari dito? Bakit nag-sandali? Bakit nag-sandali itong ano ko signature? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sandali. Iba, iba ka na na lang document. So for example, ano, pag batch signature, pare-pareho lang siya. Example, ito na lang na yung PR, yung PR natin. Yung pinirmahan ko. Check ulit. Para nag, ano din yung ano ko, yung DigiSigner ko. Tingnan ko lang ito. So as I said, no, mag-ano ka lang ng password mo. For example, in my case, yan yung ginamit ko password. Ay, sorry. 
Parang nagka-problema yung ano ko ngayon. Hindi ko alam ang, ang problem. But anyway, no, sige. Ano ko lang mamating na kung ano nangyari. Ngayon lang naman nangyari ito. When you do batch signing, like example, if you click that one, pag i-click mo kasi siya, tapos magpipirma ka, for example, na ito siya, pag pirma mo dyan, bali dito ka sa batch signing. So, ayan. So, and isa lang yung pipirmahan mo. For example, in my case, no, may, may problema at ang video signing ko ngayon. But anyway, tingnan ko lang mamaya. So actually, when you sign it, lahat po sila magpipirmahan na. Pero ito, hindi, ayaw kasi mag-digisign. Hindi ko alam bakit. Nagka-problema ngayon yung digisigner ko. Kasi sign ko palang kahapon. So parang ganun lang po siya. No? Sige, check ko muna mamaya. No? I really don't, and, hindi ko alam ano nangyari sa... Pero digisigner po yung gamit ko, Sir June. So parang ganito po siya. Hindi ko lang alam. Sala okay, salamat po. Salamat po. Okay. Ah, sandali ha. Ito pa. Tinan ko ito. Ah, ito pala. So ito palang isa, sorry. Ano pala yun? Yung isa pala yun na signature. Tingnan ko nga ito. So, ayan pala. So, ganyan pala siya. So, sige, i-demo ko pala muna. No? Sorry. So, i-demo ko lang muna itong batch signing. So, for example, no, so, pag marami yan siya, let's say, ito, ilang ba ito? Eight. So, gawin ko muna na lang yan. Ginawa ko lang siyang 16. But, up to 800, no, naka, naka try na kami ng 800. But, ito lang, no, let's say, 16 siya. So, I'll just open one. So, isa lang pag i-open mo, tapos mag-batch mag sign na po siya. So, for example, in this case here, so, isa, isa lang po ang na-open natin. Then, ilagay ko yung signature ko dyan. Sorry, kasi kayo na pala, tatlo pala yung nandito. Ito siya, ano. Ito pala yung sa akin yung one. So, kaya pala hindi siya mag -ana. So, click ko lang ng sign. So, ito po yung ano ko, yung firma ko. Yan. So, magsasign po siya ng, di ba? So, ito po siya is isa lang, di ba? So, if you notice pala, pag isa lang pala yung firmahan mo, pag manotis mo, may nakalagay na po dyan na signed. By default, nilalagyan ng signed. Ibig sabihin, na-signed mo siya. So, isi-save ko lang muna yan siya. So, digitally signed na siya, no? So, for example, ngayon, gusto ko na siya i-batch sign. Let's say, ito na lang isa, no? Yung, ito siya na-copy. So, pag gusto mo ka-batch sign, ang gagawin mo, yun na siya, na insert mo rin yung signature mo. But yun lang, i-take note mo lang na dito ka na ngayon sa batch signing. Kasi marami na siya, di ba? So, ba-batch sign tayo. So, I sabi, are you sure you want to sign and overwrite your PDF files? Diba, lahat-lahat na pipirma ko ba siya? So, ayan. So, nagpipirma-pirma na siya lahat. So, successfully signed 17 files, diba? So, pinirma na niya yan lahat. Pag okay ko niya, mananotice ko dito. Ay, sorry, ano ko muna? Ito isa. No, pag ano ko na yan siya, i-exit ko na siya. No, mananotice mo, may mga pirma na rin yan. Tingnan natin. Hindi lang siya nalagyan ng sign. Yan. So, may mga pirma na po yan lahat. Yung lahat ng nandito. So, kahit itong nasa baba na, may pirma na din siya. Tapos yung timestamp niya, kung ilang seconds, yung kanina, so ito ngayon, like 16, 18, 21, yung isa, baka 22, baka 23. Kasi per second yung paano niya. Timestamp sa computer. So, ganun po yung batch signing. Thank you po. Alright. Thank you, Ampli. Uh, Thank you. Okay, welcome. Thank you so much, Ma'am Claire. Uh, yun, kita naman po natin yung demo, no? So, talagang possible na pwede yung batch signing. Ayan. So, uh, for further questions regarding uh, ICT proficiency, meron po tayong link dito sa atin chat box. So, lahat po ng may katanungan with regard to ICT proficiency, just click on the link that we, uh, Ma'am Rudina, uh, has shared there. Okay. So ayun, so tapos na po tayo sa ating Q&A forum. So maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, don't forget also to um, sign in to our attendance and evaluation form. Kasi dyan po, uh, nagbibase yung mga certificates po natin. Alright? So before that, before we go on and say goodbye, kailangan po <laughs> natin na magpa-picture-picture muna. So we should have a a photo ops so that uh, will be uh, facilitated by one uh, sir chadi so ah uh, oh uh, opo and then we will have to be followed by our uh, closing remarks by ma'am marian ayan kanina pa po kanina pa po ready yan si ma'am marian para sa ating <laughs> closing remarks so mag picture picture muna po tayo let's open our cameras ayan and then we will have our closing remarks coming from Ma'am Marian Gosoko. Okay? So let's open up our cameras. Do the honor, Sir Chadi. Yes, I'm just waiting for everyone to turn on their um, cameras.
Okay, since half na yung naka, <laughs> naka-turn on yung cameras. Yun, diba? Lapit ang mapuno. Ayan, huwag po tayong mahiya ipakita yung beautiful faces natin. <laughs> Okay, uh, I guess uh, 90% na po yung naka-turn on sa tang camera. So, okay, everyone will be, uh, I'll be print screening the, yeah. print screen in three, two, one. Yon. on. <laughs> Okay na po, Sir Jarek. All right. So, thank you so much, Sir Chadi, for uh, doing the uh, photo ops. Ayan. So, ayan, without further ado, uh, let's all welcome uh, to give us a closing remarks. Let's welcome our IC, I, LCDB uh, focal, Ms. Mamarian Gosoko. Thank you, Sir Jarek. Uh, how was it, everyone? Sobrang information overload ba tayo? But anyway, our profound gratitude to our uh, senior HR specialist from civil service, to Sir Don Mark Philip de los Reyes. Thank you very much po for your uh, for your valuable contribution on this event po, and to our uh, PNPKI focal for Region Eight to Miss Claire Fernandez and to Sir Chadi is to lead is to deal you for for uh, for the presentation of the tech for ed program and i'm hoping uh, uh so with uh sir gerald for the ict proficiency and sir june for joining us so we were enlightened very much for so much uh, uh information uh, given by sir june as well as for sir sir mark philip and for everyone here and uh, kung meron lang po, meron pa kayong mga for clarification or you want to 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 undergo or yung mga students natin to undergo for the examinations for the proficiency for the uh, assessment uh, just message us you can find us in facebook facebook page meron po kami and then message us we will be posting po the schedules yeah, I have set na ani for Region 8 the schedules, pero we will be posting it nala officially uh, later sa ating Facebook page. With that so much, uh, with that so much ado, maraming information overload na po tayo. So, I am very much grateful and thankful to everyone. Have a happy weekend with the family and stay safe po tayo, stay healthy and mabuhay again to everyone. Thank you, Paul. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Maria. And of course, uh, we would like to thank uh, our speakers for today for giving out very informative uh, knowledge no? and I share po sa atin today. And of course, on behalf of the ICT, we would like to thank our uh, the CHED of Region 8. No, Thank you so much. And for the SUCs na talagang who gave out and raising their time to be with us today for our uh, Facebook live, live joining. So thank you. And of course, uh, to the ICT 